All right, folks, after nine weeks, 43 matches, and 110 sets, we are ready to kick off the Season 9 playoffs. We will beginning, be beginning today with Elysium versus Calamity, and I will be casting with Prion today. How are you doing, Prion? I'm doing great, Cole. It is an honor to be here with you to kick off the Season 9 playoffs long awaited for all of our viewers and we have some truly exciting matches for you today mm -hmm. and so for those of you who might not be quite in on the loop after the regular season ended we have had elysium at first place eternal at second ariandel at third and calamity at fourth and these will be our four teams for the playoffs so because elysium finished first they were given the opportunity to pick whichever team they wanted to face in this first round and they have selected calamity and this is a very storied matchup. If you remember back to the Winter Circuit 2024, when Eternal was on hiatus and Ariandel was not quite performing up to par, Calamity was the team that stepped up and challenged Elysium for that number one spot. They played each other in the Winner's Finals, and they played each other in the Grand Finals. And unfortunately for Calamity, this has been a matchup that has been very, very Elysium-sided so far. They have played... 12 sets in the past two events and Elysium has won nine of them and Calamity has only won two. So Elysium should be heavy favorites going into this. We will have a best of five today, which will be Wraith, Hillbilly, Executioner, Clown, and Oni. It will be kicking off with Calamity Wraith. And Wraith is a, a set that Calamity has been picking a lot of this season, but it has not really been working out for them. They have won one of these sets, but lost three of them. And it's been a little bit less of a common pick for Elysium, but it has been banned against them a fair bit. Prion, do we have any particular thoughts or expectations for this first Wraith set? Yeah, Cole. So you said that Calamity has been picking this Wraith really all the time, but their win rate on that Wraith is not really what you would expect for a team that's first picking it in the playoffs. So that leads me to believe that Calamity is still confident in their Wraith play on both sides, um, regardless of whether this is regular season or the playoffs. And I think the more important thing here is they think that Elysium is not going to be very strong on the Wraith. And I think we can say that Elysium has not been a huge picker of the Wraith this season. Absolutely. Uh, they Now, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure why it was banned against them. Maybe the teams know something we we don't know. A calam the one time Elysium did play Wraith, they absolutely destroyed Ariandel on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm very curious about that. And I'd like to point out that... We, I just mentioned that, you know, Calamity has won two sets, and both of those sets, Demogorgon and Cenobite, those were what Elysium banned against them going into this, so they really don't have any, like, tried and true, oh, we can beat Elysium on these sets available, so probably doubling down on that comfort set of Wraith here for uh, Elysium's first pick, they went with Hillbilly, and this is a set that has had 100% presence in Elysium's regular season. They have either picked it, or it was banned against them, or they played it as a tiebreaker, I believe. And they are 3-1 and one on it, only dropping a single set to my goat, Surdy from Tremor. Um, but it's been a, a good pick for Calamity also. They've had three, three uh, sets so far, and the only one they lost was their loss to Elysium on that. So... Uh, I know you're a little bit of a hillbilly enthusiast yourself, Pryon. I'm I'm okay at backrubbing people. That's about it, Cole. But I'm not surprised in the slightest that Elysium would pick the hillbilly in today's set. Like you said, they have nearly 100% win rate on it. And, uh, I mean, it's a really divisive set that's been getting banned in a lot of our other games because ever since the rework, uh, the fabric of the hillbilly set has drastically changed uh, with the expected results. The counterplay that the survivor teams are expected to employ is just that much more difficult, and it's it's an extremely high stress set for the survivors, where we've been constantly seeing high high level killer results. Absolutely, and for the next two sets, we have a little bit more of some wild cards. We're gonna have an executioner set, which was Calamity's pick. Executioner, a killer we've seen maybe two or three times so far, I believe. 
I think Eternals picked it twice, Cynic picked it once, but not a very popular killer that we've seen. Certainly, we have not seen it from either of these teams. It's not they have not picked it. It's not been banned in their games. And our fourth is Clown, which is Elysium's pick. And um, Clown has had no presence so far. Um, viewers might remember throughout the regular season, we had Blight bugged for a little bit of time. And so Clown was injected into the pool as a cover for Blight. Going into playoffs, the rule committee has decided that they're going to reintroduce Blight into the pool, but keep Clown and kick Legion out. So we will be having Executioner and Clown, but these are a little bit more unknown sets, so to speak. So, uh, Prian, do we have any thoughts on either of these? Yeah, the Executioner set is a really interesting one, and I am I might be a little biased towards it just because I play that killer a lot myself, and I love him. And I think the chases in that set are... It's, it's, one, of those, it's one of those rounds where it's... It just it really comes down to the 1v1 between the survivor and the killer. He usually gets a pretty small map. And it kind of reminds me of a Death Slinger set where hitting or missing your shots just decides everything. And it's gonna it's really exciting to watch for the viewers. Um, because basically every chase involves so many predictions and 1v1 moves and jukes from the survivors. Um and there's just there's a huge potential for great killer result there because of the way that you can use the cages to uh, get somebody out of the game extremely quickly. Um, but also, if the survivors have an amazing run against that uh, like shockwave power, then the survivors can get an insane result there too. So it's it's really variable, and I can't wait to see it. And then what about a clown? Moving yeah. on, as for the clown, we have not seen him at all since I believe o almost a year ago. Uh, I'm personally shocked that Elysium would have picked the clown today. I think the only prominent clown player in comp that we've seen over the last couple of years is Nightlight, and uh, he's obviously on Eternal. But uh, I really can't wait to see the clown. It's going to be pretty fun and interesting. It's something that these comp players probably don't have a lot of exposure to, uh, so they might be feeling the pain a little bit of your average player who hops on Dead by Daylight and just gets five clown players in a row. So, yeah. <laughs> And our tie break, if we go to the full game five, will be Oni. And Oni has been a really big surprise for me this season. I feel like Oni is normally a very commonly seen pick in competitive play. And it honestly has not been picked or banned a whole lot this season. Now, Calamity does appear to be one of the last few Oni teams that are left there. Um, they've had it banned against them twice, they've played it once against Cynic and had a pretty decisive victory, and they've had two unplayed tiebreakers with it. And, I, and I'd like to point out, interesting to me is, one of the bans against them was from Zero Practice, a team which used almost every single one of their bans on these Tier 1 killers, but they were willing to drop one of those to ban Calamity's Oni and Oh Boy's Wesker. And that was it. So... I would like to think that Calamity has a solid Oni player on deck. We all we all know that Zeno is a, a really, really good Oni too. So this is a set I'm really hoping we get to tiebreaker for to see what has been hidden from us all throughout the regular season. Yeah, and with this Oni set, I think you hit the nail on the head that we've seen it be a lot more popular in previous seasons. And something something has changed this season. Lots of teams are wanting to ban it out. Um, and I'm not sure it could be, I think it could be one of two things with, with the Oni, you know, that it, like the way that it works between the survivors and the killer, the survivors have to have a perfect run for their first chase to deny the Oni from getting his power. But if the Oni is able to get that first hit very quickly, the game can spiral out of control. I mean, faster than you can blink. So maybe teams, teams this season might be favoring sets that have more, uh, of a stable outcome than maybe wanting to coin flip getting a bad tile RNG and getting hit by the Oni in five gems. Fair enough. And on that note, we are loading into trial one. This will be Calamity's Wraith player against Elysium survivors. And this is where we're gonna really set the pace of the game, I think. I'd like to point out, you know, 
Um, if you've if you've been watching any of the Elysium POVs, whether you've been watching it from Xeno Stream or maybe the Comp DVD highlights, one of the things that we know is Xeno kind of masterminding this team, and he has some phenomenal mechanical players on his roster as well, and that's really one of the huge things with Wraith sets is how good are you in that 1v1 chase against Wraith? How good is the Wraith player? And we have Rocket on the Wraith, one of our best DVD League ladder players, definitely seasoned on the Wraith, and we'll have to be looking forward to what these chases unfold as our first chase will be on the Marcos. No, Zeno. Yep, we got Zeno here on this Renato. Interesting, we almost couldn't tell who he was until it was too close, but uh Rocket, he's going to eat that pallet stun and immediately leave this chase. He's now going over to the main building where he finds multiple survivors. This is going to be Doc on the Jake. He's able to take that top window in the main building. Falls down. He's able to use the stagger to get to that close pallet. Uncloak lunge coming out now for Rocket. He goes to this really unsafe pallet behind the main building. You want to use that one really quickly if you're a survivor. Uh, Rocket now. He should be getting his first hit on the Doc here. He wins the 50-50. That is the first injury for Calamity. Now Chase continuing on to the main building here as Doc. Does he have a pallet at the front here? Looks like he's going to go for the window, Cole. Yeah, another 50-50. Oh, but there is a head-on for him, so it was not a 50-50 all along. Not a whole lot Rocket can do about that. He will be committing to Doc, and that's very crucial for getting Doc to a better place to chase. There's basically three main places you want to chase on this map. You want to chase either the, the filler pallets behind Gallows, you've got this town area, and the main building loop, as long as you have this wagon pallet up, is pretty good as well. And that head-on is going to be enough to get Doc into town. He will have some windows to play here, but unfortunately he will require another body block. Pedro coming in to take that hit. We've got three, injur three injuries for this first chase, but this is going to drastically slow down the gen speed of the survivors. Keep in mind, Rocket is not running Ruin. His only gen regression is Pain Resonance, so what gen progress they do have is not being regressed until this first down comes in. Some more 50 50s. What a fake there from Doc. Oh, yeah, Doc is doing a fantastic job on these 50 50s now, but he's been zoned to a much weaker palette. He will be playing this. Does he win this 50 50? Two gens popping for it though. He might have done all he needs to do for this. He Doc has been having an incredible chase here. He is eventually going to go down, but the concern there, Cole, was are those body blocks going to convert into something? And Doc has a good enough chase with those body blocks that yes, we can say that those body blocks were exactly what they needed. Two generators are gonna pop for the first hook. Really clean survivor play from Calamity so far. Now as we go into the next phase of the game where Calamity is going to have barely any gen progress and somebody on hook, but they are out to a really good start with three generators remaining. Yeah, two gens and the double reset and even an any means on the side for that first hit. Doc getting unhooked before Pedro gets tagged means that we're going to see a tunnel out onto him pretty soon. Rocket going straight back to that, but we've got Xeno playing for the protection hit on Doc, trying to escort him over to the killer shack which can then be transitioned into these filler pallets on the side of town. And it looks like one of the gens that popped earlier was that Gallows gen, so there's not a three gen over here. So should Doc or Xeno die on this side of the map, Rocket is not in a position to defend a three gen over here. They will be able to pressure the gens opposite the map. Good macro play from Elysium. Now some more 50-50s for Doc. This one not quite making it out for him, so this will be Doc's second hook. And there does not appear to be as much gen progress. Actually, they're doubling this gen, so that's two two-thirds progress on that. I do not remember if there's a pain res on Doc. There, is, there was, so that gen will be regressed down to about half, and both survivors getting pushed off of it is a little unfortunate for Elysium, not what they would like. Now Marco's taking chase at the water tower. Zeno still injured, has to be very, very careful. And we do not know what Pedro is doing, but Marco's also taking a tag. Rocket now gets his pick up the litter for where he wants to go. Does he pressure Hook? Does he look for one of these injured survivors? Is he looking to pressure Pedro off of a gen? No, Pedro is going to be the designated savior here. Also, take a note, he has that Medal of Man with one stack available. Possibly, with all these protections coming in, a Medal of Man play might be in the works for later on. Yeah, so going into this unhook here, this is going to be the critical moment in the game poll. Is Doc going to be able to escape, or maybe not just escape, but just live for any amount of time? as one gen is going to pop in the distance under Zeno's command. And now there's those survivors are going to be resetting over there by the gen, and Doc is going to intentionally die on the pallet. 
Pedro is nearby with a flashlight, but it seems like Rocket is too smart to let this happen. So Pedro now playing this terrible pallet, and he is going to take a hit. Uh, not looking like he is going to be able to get this save onto Rocket, but he wants to continue angling for it, Cole. This is really dangerous. He's going in for it. I think he's too late, though. Yeah, just, just barely too late, late on that pallet oh. save. I think if he, if he just wouldn't have hesitated there and not stopped running, he could have maybe gotten that save. So Doc is going to die at two generators to go. And they do have this generator in the street that has decent progress. Xeno was able to complete one generator over there by the town. But now these next chases are going to be so important. We're going to immediately have chase onto an injured survivor at a bad pallet hole. And this is where Rocket can get back into the game. Oh, we've got Xeno coming in for a body block, but does not quite get the positioning on it. And this is where things can really fall apart for Elysium, especially if Xeno gets tagged here. We have seen time and time again, one of the hallmark plays for Elysium is, you know, playing for those deaths on pallets, playing for pallets. They've Xeno very often playing aggressively around those pallets, especially the sprint burst when it's available. This time, the play is fumbled just a little bit. That causes Doc to die. Also, with Pedro being slugged now and two injuries, Rocket is in a position to go for a chain slug and try and secure a 4k too. Marcos has had a little bit of time to work gens, but we see him drop down. He's not pressuring this gen. It was main building. And now he's in Rocket sights, but he has no good pallets back there. He'd have to play main, but Rocket instead does not commit to that chase. He is going to find Zeno. He's basically guarding this slug with two different survivors angling for it, but they have to cross no man's land to get to him. And... You know, I think they want to dodge it on those rockets, so to speak. Yeah, so Rocket here, he take, goes over to the water tower area and will chase Zeno on this Renato. Pedro does get picked up in the distance. Nice vault back there from Zeno. He's only going to have one more vault on this TL wall. It is going to be blocked by the entity now. Zeno is actually really holding his check spots here at this TL. He needs to make it back to the other side or this downed pallet here. Goes for the vault. Really nice play here from Zeno, super clean. He's taking his opportunities to get these vaults. Everything's on time, and he forces Rocket to leave him. That is so important, Cole. Oh yeah, the, the pickup and the reset coming in is huge. This also, with Pedro being able to chase into an area of the map that it still has in these pallets now. Of course, against Wraith, these are basically 50-50 pallets, but Rocket Pedro, you know, classic 1v1 players. This should be a very interesting chase. Pedro will be able to win a 50-50 to get to a different pallet. This one is a little bit of a longer loop, so it's a little bit safer. And I believe he also has a wagon pallet back here, if he's able to get to it. Yes, he will. No, it's not a wagon pallet, another rock pallet. But he has two drop pallets and one undrop he can play. This might actually be a hit. It's down onto Pedro in the Gallus area. We have another survivor. It's the healthy survivor. Marco's coming in to try and get a pallet safe, but Pedro did not die on the pallet, so unable to get that. Zeno is so close to finishing this gen. He's got deja vu, but if a painter is able to come in, that will interrupt him. No. He will down. Oh no! Will down for it. Marcos will commit. He has, to, but it's a wiggle off too. And Marcos can pop the gen. Pedro wiggles out. One gen, yeah. Okay, so this this I think is gonna work out really well for Elysium, but Rocket still has a chance to capitalize here now that he's got one survivor on the down on or on the ground, and he's chasing another injured survivor. Pedro does not win that 50-50. He's going to go down at the wagon or at the water tower pallet. Zeno does get picked up, but he just barely misses that lunge. Zeno is going to make the shack, and now Marcos and Pedro are congregating at the water tower. We've got Pedro on the ground. Or Rocket is continuing to play this water tower. When is he going to kick this pallet? It's been there for so long. Uh, and Marcos now making that TL wall. The door is broken, though, so it's going to be a little bit weaker. That's going to result in Marcos getting tagged. Survivors of Elysium are really in trouble here, Cole. And this is, this moment is honestly such a nice edge, even though, yeah, we only have three sages so far, but Rocket has been on multiple occasions so close to securing a three slug, and that is often the threat that there is on these sets on DDS. Once you're down to a 3v1, if the killer, whether it's Wraith, Cenobite, Singularity, it doesn't matter. Once the killer is able to secure a bunch of injuries, they're in a really good position to go for chain slugs, especially with these resources being down. Rocket sees some blood on the ground and will spot out Pedro. 50-50 on this pallet and he, or the window rather, and he wins it. Pedro goes down, and now Zeno is the last man standing with Marcos on first hook and Pedro on, I believe this will be his second hook? Now it's all up to this Zeno gonna... to bring this back. 
Now this is going to be first hook for Pedro because he was slugged on the ground for a pretty long time. And uh, now it's just it's just Zeno working on this main building gen with Deja Vu. Uh, assuming that Rocket knows where he is, he does not have enough time to finish the generator. Uh, and Rocket doesn't know where he is yet. So there might still be time for Zeno to finish this generator. Can he hit his great skill checks? Okay, no, he's actually going to go for the unhook. That generator is quite close to being done. Getting that unhook there is actually exactly what Elysium needed to stay in this game. So now they finally have two survivors standing once again. Marcos is probably going to go to second in the distance as we continue to play the 50-50s on this infamous front of main pallet on the Dead Dog Saloon. Marcos does get unhooked in the distance. Uncloak now coming out from Rocket. He has to win this 50-50. Hides the red stain. Is going to take Zeno down at the town tile window. Breaks out the wall. And he's going to go for the pick onto Zeno. I think he knows that he has to defend this main building generator. It had pretty significant progress. And the hook that he got in front of main on Pedro was not a pain resonant. So it's still going to have pretty good progress. He needs a chain res. He does get it, so that will be another 20% off of the main building. So it should be down to about two-thirds progress, roughly, with the regression, as well as, at least for Elysium, they've got that full reset coming in onto Pedro and Marco, so they are still in position to pressure this. They do see the Wraith coming towards them with the window being banned, but Rocket is looking like he's going to be on Marcos's trail. Marcos is appraised of the situation. Of course, no, he has switched over to Pedro. This will be a chase onto Pedro, but no, Rocket's just not committing. He's content to honestly hold this hook he knows where both survivors are as long as they're not pressuring that gen as long as they're not able to get that unhook rocket does not really need to commit to them he knows this spot right here at the main building is all he needs to care about yep rocket could not care any less about the water tower area of the map right now as pedro chased away from it once again and actually marcos is working on the generator above zeno's hook Looks like he's willing to give away that hook stage onto Zeno uh, in exchange for generator progress, and surely Rocket can hear the noise of the generator being worked, right? Possibly. I mean, the sound occlusion in this game can be a bit scurry. I think Rocket just decided he wanted to hear that second stage. Now he has two survivors on death hook. He will be catching Marcos trying to go for this. This will be a 50-50 on this window. Does he win it or not? He does win it. The tag onto Marcos. And now Rocket, we mentioned this earlier, he had one death and only three hook stages, but now we're still at one gen remaining, and he's up to eight hook stages with two servers on death hook. Rocket can very easily close this game out, but this gen is so close to being done, it's anyone's game, and this is the kind of high-octane gameplay we were hoping to get out of a Rocket Wraith game. Down coming into Marcos, the body block being fumbled a little bit, Pedro will run off, and I believe this might be the death onto Marcos. And what a reach there from Rocket. He's able to use the speed of the Wraith Uncloak to flick around the body block, and that results in a death onto Marcos, who earlier went second over there by the water tower. So, Pedro and Zeno are the last men standing, and, I mean, they have to finish one of these generators somehow. As Pedro now taking the slow vault onto the top main window, he makes it back down to the bottom main window as well. Wraith yeah. is going to be following with Bamboozle, I don't think he makes this pallet in the middle of the street. No, he does not. He's now going to be taking this chase to Shan. The water tower pallet should still, or the wagon pallet is gone, but he does have some things that he can chain together here if he can play this chase well. Zeno is working a gen in the distance. The clock is ticking down for Rocket. Looks like he's preemptively leaving. He thinks that Rocket is coming, and he would be absolutely correct. Great comms from, or great comms from Elysium there. Yeah, I mean, now with two gen things high progress, I think Rocket had the heads up that because Pedro was being chased around the main building, that was not the gen Zeno was pressuring. He had gone for a different one, and now he has eyes onto Zeno. If there's a chain tag here, this could be problem for Elysium, but Rocket will take the swing down, that drop down as follows Zeno. Zeno has to out to play here. This is 50-50. This is an extremely unsafe pallet. Now there's two Elysium drivers left standing, but they are both injured. And there are very few resources left on the map, and crucially, very few good resources. Zeno is, uh, sorry, Pedro is working on that main building generator. It is getting closer and closer. I do not remember if Zeno has been pain res yet, but if he is, that's the down. Rocket will just slug him and go for this. I think Pedro has time to finish this. Pedro needs to hit his greats here, Cole. There's so, it's so close. 
That generator is inching towards completion as the Wraith comes towards it and he misses the swing. Pedro lets go of the generator in time, but what is his plan here, Cole? It doesn't seem like he's going to have time to do anything here and he is going to go down. That is going to be Rocket securing the 4K1 on the Wraith. Really great play from him. He was able to keep his composure all the way through from having only three stages to uh, a 4K1 result. Really good job from Rocket. Absolutely. This this game so close to being a 4K all for Elysium, but also so close to being a 4K1, even a 4K2 at points for Rocket with how much pressure he had going into the early game. So this will be closing out the uh, that first trial as the last survivor is hooked and will be dying here. So we will be going into a short break before the next trial of this matchup. So please stay tuned for more of Elysium versus Calamity in this playoffs. Welcome back everybody to the Dead Dog Saloon where we will now see the conclusion of the first opening set of the Season 9 playoffs. We have Zeno for Team Elysium on the Wraith with a 4K1 win condition to meet against Calamity. Not an easy task as we see. He's finding Rocket first, probably not the guy you want to chase first on a 1v1 oriented killer as Rocket is playing his check spots really well on this window tile and he's actually gonna hold W to another pallet already the kind of chase that we expect to see from Rocket Cole. Yeah, Rocket Paddy gets him to this pallet. A little bit of a friendly teabag there and I really want to highlight, oh, this will be attack on him, but I really want to highlight this very interesting build choice Zeno has gone for, the full, I'm going to slug you with M1s, he's got Surge and Eruption, like the two gen regression perks you can get value out of just for downing survivors with that M1, he's got Sloppy, and he's got Forced Hesitation, so really punishing altruism plays, whether on un unhook scenarios or slugs, Rocket taking the shades wins at 50-50, this will buy him enough time to get to another pallet, but the pallet didn't spawn. He's kind of zoned edge map. A rock loop here will give him some time. Zeno playing around it. So even though there's no pallet or window here, Rocket buying a lot of time for his team. He will actually make it back to the water tower. Pallet, just honestly incredible play. And gets the sun. And on top of that, he is stunned into the middle of the map. Rocket can make the shack from here. Three gens almost surely being cranked, and Zeno does not have Bamboozle to block this shack, and now all survivors will know that. No Bamboozle in play. Rocket dropping the pallet will get through. This is exactly the kind of chase you need from your first survivor to be found by the killer. Rocket, the 1v1 god here. He is He's just been making a fool out of Zeno in this first baseball. He was looping him on nothing there at the water tower for so long. He's eventually going to go down, and that is going to reveal a lot of Xeno's perks here, as the Forced Hesitation is going to activate onto multiple survivors, as well as Jolt, causing resources to be chewed through here behind the Gallows area, as it's going to be Marco here taking a hit on this edge map tile. He's going to have to run sort of back into the killer, and I think this is where we're going to start to see the patented Xeno slug plays as uh, I think that was Laser there trying to get the pickup onto Rocket. Unable to do it because Zeno's still in the area. So Marco here going to go down again. And this is starting to look like exactly what Zeno wants with this build. Oh yeah, this is a, a four slug fiesta inbound, but we do have a third generator being cranked in the distance and the survivors can at some point simply hop into lockers and force these pickups. Zeno now going for the pickup onto Marco. This will be a hook in one of the easier hook spots to defend, like right underneath this welcome to Glenvale sign. Zeno will now be looking for Rocket most likely, or looking to chain some injuries together. He's very, he found the reset, but not in time to interrupt it. Laser will be body blocked away from this pallet. This should be a tag onto him, but Rocket did get reset, and we know that Pedro Hertz has been working the generator this entire time. Zeno now breaking chase, going to sort of hover this choke point for the hole. Actually, Pedro Hertz has gone for the save onto Marco. He will be able to get it without taking a tag. Zeno trying to cut off. The FTP comes in onto Marco, so this will be a one for one trade onto Pedro Hertz, but he has a pallet, so Zeno will break chase, go back onto Marco, misses the swing that will buy Marco a little bit of time, but he does not make anything for this. 
So two, actually three injuries for Zeno, and this is what he wants to see to try and get a four slug going. But a third generator is complete, and we are one away from that tie condition. So 50 is being played here. Marker doing a fantastic job of staying on his feet as that power is broken. He puts another one. And that for the people from uh, Pedro has bought the survivors of Calamity so much time here as Marco gets a very clean stun there on Casino at this very unsafe pellet. Just that extra hit that Marco can take in his chase here is buying them so much time to work on the generators for free. They're only one generator away from the tie condition here, Cole, and with only one stage on the board, Calamity is in a really good spot. Oh yeah, and remember, Zeno not having Bamboozle will especially punish him on this main building. He has, there are two windows here that can be chained together. But Marco will have to take his distance away as he predicts Zeno breaking that breakable wall. He does have a very, very weak filler pallet in the corner here. And even if he doesn't win 50-50, he can be zoned to edge map here and surely die right after. This will buy his team time. We see one survivor resetting in the distance is the empath empathic connection survivor marco does have this pallet here too but he is zoned to the short side so he will just take his distance to the corner of the map he will be going down shortly and i do not believe that xeno has applied eruption to any of his gen so not a lot of value here as both surge and fortification are proximity based water tower on about 40 percent uh, and another gen that was getting progress too it was laser another gen about 40 percent so surely one of these gens should pop as Marco doesn't hook the second time, and we see Rocket stealthing for that pull. And you're absolutely right, Cole, that Zeno has not kicked a single gen this game, so he's been playing with three perks so far, as uh, it seems like Rocket is going to be going for a very fast unhook onto Mark there, as the injured Pedro is going to be found at the water tower. He might make it back to this window, but no, he's actually going to force Locker. They've already called out the Surge or Jolt, whichever one you want to call it. And that is why you don't see this perk becoming very popular in competitive matches, because survivors will call it out and go into lockers to prevent it from activating. So that is going to be the first eruption on, of the game placed onto that water tower generator. And Marco in the distance is going to be healed up. You can assume that he's going to be playing very stealthily there so that he's not found on his last life. And the last or the second to last generator is going to go in the distance. So tie condition has been met for the survivors of Calamity. Now they're going to be looking to put the final nail in the coffin here for uh, Elysium and go up in this series one to zero, Cole. Is this what you were expecting to see when you saw these sets? Not at all. And even though when we were down to one gen in the other game, it was three hook stages, this is a much better position for Calamity because their hooks are spread. So there are still four survivors standing. And as I believe Elysium survivors also had two injuries entering the 3v1. So Calamity definitely in a better situation. The gen spread being about equivalent. And with Marco also being that death hook survivor and also being healthy, and uh, also a very interesting new spectator bug the audience might notice as we have this damage bar appearing on screen constantly after Zeno kicks with Shadow Dance. So, Wraith spec being bugged once again, the uncloak overriding that, playing with Water Tower Pallet, 50 50 being won by Rocket, but once again, no pallet here to play. He's got some rocks to loop and a hook. Oh, this pallet's actually been picked up, I believe, by any means, so. Rocket will be continue looping it. Again, more 50 50s here. He does keep winning them. And three survivors cranking gens in the background, or I guess possibly resetting Pedro Hurts, but they should be able to reach their win con here. Eruption does trigger now for once, and the survivors will be apprised of the fourth and final perk in Xeno's build, but they are doubling this gen by the main building. They will have to leave it in time as Marco's in position to pick up rocket and this is going to be where we start to see is xeno able to take the calamity survivors health states faster than they can get gen progress but in a 4v1 this time is not on xeno's side this is where you would need to see a 3v1 to be able to play this game and xeno has not been able to secure it just yet major is going down will be applying surge to that gen once again but the pickup came onto rocket and there's a gen that they can be they can be working on where rocket was picked up they will um, leave it with a skill check unfortunately being triggered so a little bit of aggression on that as well this is not a safe tile Xeno will spot Rocket stealthing near this and... Yeah, and here Cole is where as Rocket is going to go down on the water tower pallet once again but here is where we're going to see what Xeno's build is made for because this is actually a little known fact about generator regression perks is that surge and eruption actually stack if the survivor is downed in surge range and that is 
a near almost a 20% flat regression on a basic attack. And that is why Zeno is uh, bringing this build today as another locker is forced by Pedro and they need to be doing that if they're not going to be able to get away from the generators before Zeno can down them. Yeah, we have been seeing the survivors pressuring these two gens back and forth, one by water tower, one by main, on opposite ends of the street. We do have another generator that's across from them, more towards the middle of the map, that so far appears to not be worked on. So I wonder if at some point we'll see Calamity survivors breaking off and having like one of them try to fight with that instead, as opposed to just having Xeno ping pong back and forth between these two gens but now they're going to start reaching that regression cap and that is where things have become extremely problematic for Zeno with four survivors again still in play the altruism is not nearly as punished as it would otherwise be body blocks are available an extra survivor for unhooks is available or for pickups Zeno now trying to chain these injuries together only laser is left as a healthy survivor we will see him working on dish or two and they pop it in time securing the win for calamity so Calamity is going to go up one to zero in this important playoff set against Elysium, who I'm sure the Twitch chat gambling would reveal is the favorite here. So Calamity jumping out to a one zero lead, probably not what a lot of you expected to see today, but this is their pick, the Wraith. And I've always said that Calamity is a team that nobody wants to face in an elimination situation. They've been out here grinding for so long getting second, third, fourth places, always competing, never giving up. And I think we might be seeing the fruits of their labor today, Cole. Yeah, and one thing I want to look forward to from this point is seeing how the, the temperaments of these teams plays in. I, I feel like Calamity is a team that we would identify as being fairly even tempered, but Xeno as a player we know is, you know, very subject to moves and if this gets them into you know a downward spiral this could be a problem but Zeno's also been a player who has really really stepped up when his feet are put to the fire especially when he's been bm so we could see a bounce back from Zeno here after this set anything is possible going into that hillbilly set i mean especially going into the hillbilly set and you said it i mean Zeno is a player that we've seen where you give him a meet in win condition like a 4k4 from his survivors and he will go out there and get you a 4k5 so elysium is never going to be out of this with xeno as their killer player there's a reason why he's touted as one of the best in the world and uh i mean calamity going up one to zero is honestly the most exciting result here that i think we could have seen just because of the possibilities it brings going into the rest of today Oh yeah, I think especially when you're an underdog at a minimum, you want to be winning the sets you picked. It's a lot easier to cope with, okay, well, you know, we lost this set, whatever, we don't really play it, the other team is better at it, that, that's fine. But if you're losing the sets you pick over and over again, that is when it starts to be a little unfortunate as Laser just dips from this trial. We got three injured survivors left standing. Rocket will be the one going down, possibly at Sacrificial Lamb, who has now spent over half of his bleed out timer on the ground, thanks to a signature Xeno cook build. Um, I think throughout the regular Let's... season, we saw Xeno pull out some variants from Perk Boys time and time again, especially on Hillbilly. And let's, before before we go, let's not understate just how important Rocket was to this win for Calamity. The chases that he had at the beginning of the game against Zeno and continuing into the late game as well at the Water Tower were nothing short of perfect. He generated so much time for his team, and uh, I think that's a huge part of Calamity taking the win here. Oh yeah, and I, I want to bring out, Rocket is a recent pickup for Calamity, you know. He had been on a turnum previously, and with a turnum disbanding, Rocket went over to Calamity, picked up some of these 1v1 killers for him. He's been really, really clutch for them on Wraith and on Demogorgon as well. Remember, Demogorgon being one of those sets that they previously won against Elysium 2. So Calamity definitely happy with that pickup at this point in time. Yeah, so going into the next set, which is going to be the Hillbilly, I mean, we're going to go from a sort of Calamity-favored set to one that I believe is heavily favored for Elysium. We're going to have Xeno on the Hillbilly, and I'm sure you guys, a lot of you already know about the unique style of Hillbilly play that he has been bringing in these sets, but Cole, why don't we explain it for people that haven't seen it before? Oh yeah, so... Hillbilly, you know, of course, got buffed massively towards the end of Winter Circuit. And ever since then, Hillbilly has been 
uh, an extremely oppressive killer in in comp he's been treated like an s tier or tier one is the official wording in our balancing but he's kind of like a a tier one light kind of where the survivors do not get deliverance or unbreakable or dead hard against him which are normally staples of that tier of play but so what happens with hillbilly is because unlike other s tiers who have to choose to either use their power for mobility or for chase hillbilly gets to basically be anywhere on the map whenever he pleases and not only does he maintain his chase power but he actually gets stronger when he goes into blue after using his power for map mobility so it's very easy for hillbilly players to hard punish mispositioning also because they're unable un unlike the other s tiers able to just insta down you if you're out of position hillbilly just ping pongs across the map and chain slugs people over and over again which allows hill players to opt for a lot of creative build choices and really punishes survivors who make even the slightest mistake against him yes and before we go into the match i want to i want to make sure that chat understands just how difficult this set is for survivors imagine you're being chased by the hillbilly and he's revving his chainsaw and goes into overdrive but in that instant, he turns around and goes for your teammate across the map. You have about 1.5 seconds to tell your teammate that the that the overdrive hillbilly is coming. And uh, even then, your teammate has to react to it in time as well. And that's why you see all of these huge hillbilly results. Teams have been struggling with him ever since his rework happened. And it's, it's just so difficult to be able to communicate where he's going and react to it in time when you're a team of four people that are all doing different things. At the same time, the the ray of hope for survivor teams is Hillbilly is able to be ran if you you know if you have good enough cases. The the killer is really dependent on stacking up that pressure, and we we'll see an immediate down onto Marco. And Marco is going to eat the opening mobility oh. chainsaw from the Hillbilly. That is just not what you want to see for Calamity as, I mean, there's not even any time to talk about the build or anything because yeah. we are already into the multiple chases that Zeno has been creating here. He's going to break that pallet. He's in overdrive. This is a really dangerous car to be on, and Pedro is going to go down two, two survivors already on the ground for Calamity. Cole, this is, uh, this is really something for Zeno. Zeno woke up today and chose slugging. That's really what it is. I mean, looking at oh, you say that as he as he picks a survivor up and hooks them. Well, I mean, yeah, but he so he's got he's got ruin and Santa. Like the the idea behind here is clearly you know to just have multiple survivors engine sludge at all times, let ruin do the dressing for you. Definitely a, a build you can opt for into the hillboy set. And Calamity prepared for that by giving laser no miter. A perk that you'll see sometimes on like plague and leaping sets, which are already gonna be broken. But this way, the no miter player can afford to play a lot more aggressively. And if you slug them, it's not really worth anything. But so far, this is not quite working out as it's the healthy survivors that are getting sniped by that Billy saw. Zeno actually dropping Pedro first on the hook and opting to go somewhere else. I don't know if he's gonna be trying to hold this hook. Maybe he's looking for a savior around where. Marco with hook, that appears to be the case. Zeno can kind of just sit here and guard it, but yeah. When your very first map mobility chainsaw just randomly hits a survivor, I mean, it's Zeno, so I'm sure it wasn't random. But when your first chainsaw hits Marco like that, five seconds into the game, you don't really need to go on a slugging spree if it's Zeno. You can just sit here and let him go to second. It's a more traditional style of gameplay. He's now going to be leaving. Uh, and he's gonna find this generator with a lot of progress. He's gonna start regressing with Ruin. Pallet Zoom Pallet is going to be dropped. He's not gonna go for a curve. He's gonna go back to the hook. Smart move from Zeno. as Pedro is now picked up off the ground. But he spent a significant amount of time on the ground pull, and I think that's gonna matter later. As Zeno now going right back to the hook, I think he wants to just sacrifice Marco here and now. Yeah, he, he can absolutely go for this. Marco's in a bit of a dead zone. The gen progress was a bit slow. Laser was able to pop that one gen in time, but they have no gen progress elsewhere. And the three stacks of Thana slowing them down a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're going to be at four gens with only three survivors left standing. You never want to see that. The survivors at least have broken Undying in crowd control during this time. Ruin is still active. Well, okay, Ruin is now broken, so it's just Thana. So at least Zeno's perks are down in exchange for Marco's life. 
as he continues to hold this and will identify which gen he wants Chainsaw to after his death. He will go for Shaq instead. Will we have another chase being occurring here? No, no chase here. Nothing on this gen either. Actually, no, we do see Rocket. Now we'll see if Zeno can get some payback for those race chases onto Rocket. Rocket with the Urban Evasion, but it will still be a death for him. Not able to crowd check that saw around the corner. Zeno now with the 3v1 will commit to that slug. Will find Laser on the hill. Will be able to get an M1 down on him. He does have no Mither, but that will still afford Zeno some time. He will go ahead and pick up. So Pedro will now look to pick up Rocket. He will have time to do that. He does have Desperate Measures. Another build adaptation that will help immensely against the Natophobia. Laser being hooked will have DS off hook as well, I saw. But now Xena with two injured survivors left standing will have all the time in the world to try and pressure this. I mean, this is Xeno's game right now. The survivors of Calamity are just trying their best to survive and not really doing a very good job as uh, Rocket is going to get healed in the distance. And, I mean, regardless of the fact that Xeno only has one perk, and that was actually inner healing there, I think... Uh, Zeno actually called that out there, and Rocket had to jump out of the locker right after being healed. Afraid that he was going to get pulled out, and another nice curve coming from Zeno. He's able to catch Rocket out on the corner of that double window tile. Really nice play there from Zeno. I mean, that's just what we expect from him, and it's pretty incredible that he's able to catch out the extreme one v one player Rocket on that on that tile with a curve. We can see how how little time you actually have to react to especially in blue like you basically have to win the 50 50 because if you guess wrong you do not have time to react to this it's it's very much like um a, a blight, old blight in fifth rush with double speed except this time it ins down do um and also because you know 200 200 years of game design experience the, the you just can't you just can't yeah, and you just you really just can't play these car tiles against Zeno. he's just too good and if you, if you drop the pallet, he's just going to go around it and go for a wide angle curve. If you greed the pallet, you're exa exactly what happened to Laser there is going to happen to you. And he's so mobile that he's already back across the map. And I think he's actually standing on the tile there, Cole. That's a new level of claiming the pallet. <laughs> so Pedro does have Sprint Burst, but Sprint Burst is still, like, I don't know, 50% slower than Blue saw with engravings. So, he's got a seawall to play, but that pallet was dropped and I believe broken earlier. Actually, Zeno leaving will go onto Rocket, trying to interrupt him from going for a save. This pallet will be dropped, but saw still being in play. Rocket will be forced to stay at that pallet as it's broken. Firecracker comes in that will stop Zeno from sawing him, but Zeno is going to try and... He cross maps Pedro now as well. Rocket the last man standing, and Zeno knows where he just was. He will have no time to rotate away from there. This is just how hard the hillbilly can punish even the slightest misposition, whether it's in your micro, in your chase, or your macro, in your map movement, and Zeno is showcasing this perfectly right now as Rocket will be medkitting himself on the edge map as the rest of his team dies, and Zeno, I believe, has spotted him out. He will not have time to finish this heal, although the saw would, you know, not matter anyway. Rocket with Urban Invasion will be able to at least dodge it on that saw, but he is not long to this world, as Pedro still has a good minute and a half left on the ground, and there's no chance that Rocket lasts that long to make it all the way to the other side of the map to get that hatch escape. Yeah, so Rocket gonna be going down here to the M1 at the Pellet Gym, securing a 4k4 for Zeno. And what did we just say about Zeno after the race set goal? Yeah, no, Zeno absolutely showing up on this hillbilly. And if there's any killer in the game that you would expect, if I told you, Brian, oh yeah, it was a, it was a 4k4 in that set, hillbilly is like the first killer that would come to mind as who's the culprit of that 4k4. We've only seen a handful of those 4 k 4s this season. I know we've got some from Billy, we've got some from Nurse. I don't know if any other killers have given it to us. Actually, no, it's no, only it's really. Two. It's just Billy and Nurse, and then I think some 4K3s have gone to I believe, Unknown and Oni, but um, they're those really those guys really aren't that capable of using a uh, or getting a 4K4 compared to, at least compared to Billy and Nurse. Apparently, we have gotten a 4K4 Spirit game. I just looked it up. This is actually the first 4K4 Billy we had, so a record being set for this season. As Pedro with the self unhooked to speed that came up will 
send up the bat signal into the sky for Zeno to come back and put him out of his Yeah, and let's, uh, let's just explain that rule to uh, chat really quick because it doesn't always come into play. Like, if you're in a situation where the game is over and you've got two people on the hook but one of them is only on first stage, those people are allowed to attempt on the hook in order to speed the end of the game up for a better viewing experience. And if they do happen to get the 4%, they're supposed to just stand there and let the killer know where they are so that the killer can come back and hook them. Just results in a better viewing experience for everybody speeding the games up. Yep. Yep, so that will be a 4K4 for Xeno. Calamity will essentially have to get a 4K5 if they want to win this set, but um, that's probably going to be a foregone conclusion. So we'll see what Calamity's Billy player will be able to cook up for the second set of this trial. Of match, rather. Yeah, and with the killer being so strong, we have seen so much insane build variety with the hillbilly. I mean, right just there, we saw Hex crowd control, which I think until this season was just rarely ever seen, not more than a few individual times. And now, I mean, this season, we've been seeing it on hillbilly, we've been seeing it on Oni, we've been seeing it on Wraith even sometimes. Uh, and... It, it's a really strong perk that I think has been really underrated for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, and I'd like to point out here also, we, we were highlighting the, the pickup of Rocket for Calamity earlier. Now we're seeing Yokot on the killer. Yokot being a, a pickup after a Synapse disbanded. We saw Yokot was a player that was playing basically every killer for that team and never playing Survivor. And another pickup that's been really good for Calamity, we had seen... Uh, up until that point, Calamity was one of the smallest rosters that we had. I think only five players basically spreading killer duties between them, not really having a main killer. And that also kind of meant that some of their killer sets were a little bit weaker than others. And introducing these extra players, Rocket, Yokot, and the like, has really expanded the versatility of this team. And I think we're really seeing it throughout Season 9. Yokot has put up some actually incredible hillbilly performances previously and it's part of the reason why calamity has a very positive win record on this killer again only having lost hillbilly to elysium possibly going to make that a, a double here but yokot can easily take a win here if elysium continue to make mistakes yeah like you said yokot is one of the best hillbilly players that we have seen this season but he's up against arguably the best here in xeno I mean, teams that love the Hillbilly set, I don't. I really think there isn't one that's up there more than Elysium. So this is probably going to be Yokot's greatest challenge yet. He has been playing a ton of that Hillbilly this season, but I, there's really not a worse win con than this. Yeah, I mean, worst win con would be like, what, 4K5 with a penalty where you just know that you lost before okay, you did. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to <laughs> get technical, they forget to set the map and then all die at five gens. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that would be certainly unprecedented. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. And I'm curious to see what build Yokot's cooked up with because Hillbilly is a super versatile killer. Uh, you know, the strength of it and the way it can play, you have a lot of options to go for. I remember at one point we were seeing Xeno roll with like distressing Cholrophobia, Infectious Fright, or something like this. I. I believe that was the set that it lost so you know maybe cooking a little bit too hard but um hillbilly definitely one of those killers where you are able to get a lot of variety and uh, i'm super curious to see what yokot has pulled up for this and to see if leeson survivors have pulled anything interesting out like that no mither that we saw uh calamity try to get value out of on laser just unfortunately laser being the survivor whose positioning was working out from the best not being caught off guard he kind of was the player that they wanted to be downed but um not what they were hoping for so this uh connected yeah, with that with that no mither with that no mither play i feel like the value that you'll see from it isn't super obvious um it's just going to come in changing the killer's behavior like with a guy like xeno you know he just wants to slug everybody on the ground when he's playing hillbilly but uh, when he sees a no mither guy and he downs him, it's just going to be, well, oh crap, I have to pick that guy up, don't I? Yeah. And, and no mither is the only option the survivors have to for, for anti-slug because Unbreakable, specifically banned against Hillbilly, uh, Exponential is general banned, and uh, actually, I want to say We're Gonna Live Forever is 
possibly allowed, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Soul, I don't soul Guard might also be in there with how many soul. hexes that we see against Billy, but I'm assuming that's banned as well. I, I believe Soul Guard is general banned, but um, I think We're, We're Gonna Live Forever might be a tier 2 ban, so that should be allowed against Hillbilly. But I don't, I don't think we've seen it. We certainly haven't seen much value out of it. So, yeah, definitely. I'm curious why we haven't seen a whole lot of it. Certainly, Billy being one. Oh, we do have it on Pedro here this game. So that's pretty cool. But Yokot pulling up with uh, Eruption. That's, you know, actually pretty standard. Having that backup in case your runes cleanse. Mana and Surveillance. So Yokot going to have the heads up and know exactly where to use his pain saw mobility as soon as Survivor leaves a ruin gen. So Yokot will break a pallet and leave. He will find Marco's crushing edge map. Will he be able to get to the pallet? No, he's got a weird tile here, and it will be get down onto Marcos. Expecting a curve around the corner, the crash attack not working out for him. Marcos will be slugged with Yokot. Looks for a different survivor. Uh, and that's actually almost as fast of a down as Zeno got in the last game. Too, so Marcos caught out in the middle of the pile, and he's going to immediately go down. And Yoka is betting a lot here on having his totem not get found, as Marcos gets actually picked up very quickly there. That must have been uh, Pedro there stealthing for the heal. Must have started as soon as he left, and Blue Chainsaw coming in here on this pile of tires. He actually gets the blind there, and it looks like Yoka is pretty lost here. He's actually going to leave Zeno. What a firecracker there from Zeno. Yeah, I mean, but Yoka doesn't have a whole lot of choice. He knows that his win condition here is basically going to be to four slug survivors. So if a chase looks like it's going to be in a bad spot, he has to just leave it. And because it's Hillbilly, you're not punished that hard for leaving chases anyway, because you're so easily able to get a new chase if that's your heart's desire. So, and Yokot also, he gets confirmation that the survivor is at that location before he gets there, because the gem turns white as soon as the ruin direction kicks in, so he knows when he's even 10 meters away, if there is someone there or not, because the survivor obviously has to leave that gen before the hillbilly gets to it. So now chase on to Pedro. Yokot will be possibly leaving, but the crowd check will keep Pedro safe. An M1 coming in. Yokot is getting a lot of M1s, but unfortunately he really needs these chainsaw down if he wants to get these chain slugs. But Pedro going edge up a little bit should be M1 territory. But yes, he will be dying on pallet. The palisade can come in, but Yokot obviously just gonna go for a chain slug here. And there's not really anything else he can do here, Cole. He needs to slug as many survivors as he can, and a generator at the school bus is almost complete, as well as one being worked on uh, elsewhere on the map. So two two generators are about to pop for Team Elysium. The first one is going to go. That is the tie condition. As Yokot here, he's in overdrive onto Marcos here, but that other generator is so close to popping, and that would be the win condition for Team Elysium here. He's trying to play this pallet against Marcos, but uh, Marcos very patient here. He makes it back around to the window side once again. Overdrive chainsaw is going to be pulled up, and he is going to get that down. So nice play there from Yokat, but he can't pick up. He has to go for another down, and he sees Zeno here at this car. He's going to bump on that tire stack right there. Zeno is going to keep running, taking his distance, and seems like everything is kind of falling out of uh, Yokat's hands here. And, I mean, you really can't blame him with this win condition. Yeah, I think I think these names might honestly be cursed. Remember, Zeno got his first down onto Marco, and Yoka got his onto Marcos, the player formerly known as Shinna. So maybe it's just putting those five letters in your name versus you against Hillbillies, but Yoka, unfortunately, not able to get a, an early second down. We saw with Zeno, yes, he got that first down on the Marco, but he got another survivor down almost immediately after, and that was where the pressure really snowballed. Yoka gets that first down onto Marcos, but not quite able to get that second down as well allows Elysium survivors to recover, but on top of that, the fact that Elysium survivors know that their win condition is simply pop two gens allows them to make much better informed macro decisions than Calamity survivors had in the previous game. They were simply playing to not get completely snowballed, but, you know, when you know that you can afford to play greedy or afford to play super safe, that's the win condition for Elysium being met, but... Yeah, after the, the Xeno's Hilly performance, they had a very simple time playing this. We do have three slugs coming in, Doc the last survivor standing, and this will possibly be a 4k3, which would be an incredible Hilly result in itself, 
but unfortunately a bit too little a bit too late and that will be elysium taking that hillbilly set and bringing us to a one-to-one -one. yeah really great play here from team elysium on the set that they chose that's what we expect from them on the hillbilly and uh i mean they've come roaring back to tie this series one to one so i mean we're we're 50 50 now really exciting times are coming we're going into a very interesting pick in the next match as uh doc now he is hiding in the locker channeling his inner dwight as uh the hillbilly is near and all of his teammates are on the ground so not really entirely sure what doc's plan is here cole um maybe he's trying to get hatch as if that might matter I think at this point, because of Billy's mobility, it's even the most safe gates you could possibly get after hatch close are not safe against Billy. It takes 20 seconds to get a gate open, and Billy's across the map in like three, so you're not getting a gate open. I think Doc was kind of waiting on these survivors to get their uh, their slug, Heels 99, and possibly also get into the position. We see the last two slugs, Zeno and Marcos, are right next to each other, so Doc able to crouch tech that and get the pallet drop, but possibly... This will be an opportunity for uh, either Pedro or Doc to pick up those other two slugs. So the recovery from this 4K3 coming in, and all it required was Doc to simply not be found, let his teammates do most of the work for him with the crawling, with the recovering, and I think one survivor surely will have Nasty. That's a very, very valuable perk against Ridley, as now we have only Zeno left being slugged, Jokot and Michael for a pick up here, knowing that the set is already lost, you may as well. Doc is covering very aggressively for a pick up onto Zeno, but Jokot now deciding what he wants to do. He will be going back over Zeno's slug, and the pickup is still not coming in. He sees some blood pools, and that is from Pedro, who will be playing this shack or the main building window. As the pickup comes in on Zeno from Doc, the M1 actually not a chainsaw. I guess expecting that the pallet will be made. So an M1 with through that pallet, the survivor not playing it. Now we have four injured survivors, no hooks so far, but at least a fully stacked Nanophobia will be something as Zeno will be greeting that pallet and it will pay off for him. Yep, looks like Zeno finally going to drop that car pallet and it's going to be immediately broken by Yokat. But, uh,. Zeno going down again in the main building, and I mean, we know that we know we already know the result of this game as Yokat is going to get blinded on that window right there. Uh, Zeno is going to continue to be slugged on the ground, and nice curve there on to Pedro at this truck pallet. And uh, it, what's surprising to me, Cole, was that throughout this entire game, Ruin is still standing, and it's not even in a very good spot. I mean, I think oftentimes in in the meta that we've been seeing emerging where Ruin has been become a staple on basically every killer. What we see is the killer player will bring Ruin and a backup to Ruin, whether that's Penimeno on killers below tier 1, or it'll be Eruption or Pop. And usually the decision that teams make is whatever the killer has that's not Ruin is worse to deal with than Ruin. So we just leave the Ruin up, we don't want to risk Penimeno, and we don't want to risk Eruption. Um, in this case, the survivors, the, I mean, you could go for the cleanse because why not, but I feel like you generally just wouldn't want to deal with the eruption anyway, but, uh, I'm not 100% clear on what scenarios you want to cleanse the in exactly, uh, I, but, but this is just, I think we've just decided that we're going to be slugging on general principle, you know, like you get those public matches where you got like two boil over gamers in your lobby and, and one of them burned a, a pet a putrid oak and you're like you know what you get your wish you can just bleed on the ground i think this is kind of the vibe we're channeling in this match so far um fortunately for those viewers who are like hmm, you know the slugging is not that great i believe this will be the last set where you where you will see this well, okay only can be like that but 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 hear me out executioner and clown that are coming up those are not killers that you're gonna see chain slugs in, so you know, just the, the Billy the Billy's doing Billy things. We're used to that by now. Clown and Eggsy will be a change of pace with Marco saying, you know what, you're gonna slug me, you're gonna slug me in the basement. I wanna change the scenery here. As we had Zeno bleed out and now Yokot is looking for Pedro or Dr. Pro flying up, we'll let him know someone is definitely right here. Yep, and uh, looks like it's going to be a sprint burst from Pedro. He's going to make it all the way back to this TL wall. 
and Moonwalk coming out now from Yo-Cat. He's uh, really, really looking in, looking there at his ruined totem. I guess uh, taking in the fact that it's still standing. Chainsaw now coming out at this edge map tile. He is going to bump on the pallet there, and I mean this is just so much Billy gameplay cold that uh, I guess I guess Yo-Cat just really wants to practice for the finals here. He's that confident that Calamity is going to take this series, so he needs to be brushing up on his Billy as much as he can before the finals. Honestly, very valid. Although I feel like a lot of teams, after seeing like how strong Elysium has been on on Hillbilly throughout the the whole season, not just on Zeno's Billy performance as a killer, but also on the fact that Elysium is one of the survivor teams that has gotten some of those low stage results against other Hillbillies. I feel like Hillbilly should be a ban against Elysium, no matter who you are, right? We even saw yeah, in the, the final set of final match of the regular season, Elysium had against Eternal was against you know dan hillbilly and they pull up a phenomenal result in that too like i don't think anyone who's in the playoffs is going to want to let police and get hillbilly again yeah and uh let's actually let's talk about the bands um the, the hillbilly you would think that he would be one of the most banned killers in this season but there are actually a few killers that have mo significantly more bands than the hillbilly mm -hmm. and uh so i'm looking at the stats right now and actually the most banned killer of this season is the singularity and followed up right behind him is the nurse with only one less ban. And then third place is a mastermind ban on Cold Tower 1. And then you have a bunch of killers that are tied at 13 bans, and the hillbilly is one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and one of the things that we've seen, I believe, if, if my memory is correct, I think we had that period of time towards the middle of the season where Blight was out of the pool due to a bug. Before that, Blight was getting a lot of bans, and once Blight got removed, then we saw a lot of the bans directed at him going over towards Hillbilly instead, but yeah. Um, basically, the thing that we're seeing is teams are prioritizing bans on mechanical killers. S-tiers, Wesker, uh, Singularity and Unknown are both very demanding killers to play as well. And if you know that the other team has a killer player who is particularly proficient at that killer, and you don't, you need to remove that killer from the pool. And I think Hillbilly really falls in that category. But I think there's probably going to be a couple more teams that have Billy players than teams that have a Singularity player or an Unknown player because those are more, you know, recent killers to come out. So I'm not surprised to see the priority being shifted away from, you know, these staples. Billy and Nurse have been staples of comp play for forever now. The thing that's been interesting to me is the priority on Wesker bands because I feel like Wesker is something that most teams would be comfortable picking. But yeah, it's been banned a lot and not picked all that often. So I'm, I'm curious as to why. I'd love to hear from the teams. Yeah, from... I mean, I don't think chat will be able to come up with an answer for that either because from what I've seen, chat absolutely loves Wesker sets. And I mean, I can't disagree with them. It's, it's really fun to watch for both sides. Wesker is one of my favorite killers to get chased by. And uh, moving to a new topic, bef right before we go into this next set, the Executioner Cole, let's play a little game. Um, without looking, can you guess what the least banned killer in this whole season was? Uh, they only have uh, one ban throughout all of Season 9. I'll give you a hint. It's somebody that's very near and dear to you. To me? Oh, it's got to be Plague. It has to be Plague. Yeah, only one team has elected to ban Plague throughout all of Season 9. And I think that's really interesting because, I mean, there's only, like, barely any killers are even close to that that tiny amount of bans. I mean, I feel like Pl Plague shouldn't be a killer that anyone's worried about. It's not, you're, you're not going to be punished if you, like, it's not a mechanical killer exactly. You're not going to be... Um, you know, super punished if you don't have a, a dedicated plague player. The the macro gameplay is not as demanding as, say, an indoor set would be, where, you know, a lot of teams are banning indoor sets against Russian teams because Russian teams are just so good at those sets. So I think plague is a killer that, yeah, I don't see why you would want to ban it over any other killer. Um, we, we saw, like, I think even something like Legion, which you wouldn't figure anyone would want to pick like i know 
uh, Ultra caught a few Legion bans just because I guess he's known for playing that killer and nobody else wanted to ever deal with it. But Plague is something that like everyone plays and can play, so not surprised. But going back to this this Executioner, which will be Calamity's killer first, they did pick this. Uh, I'm very curious how this will pan out, simply because it's not a killer we've seen a whole lot of. It's a killer that's had overall fairly low stage games in general. Uh, it's not terribly and, common in comp as either a 4v1 or a 1v1 killer, and we have not seen it at all from either of these teams. It's not been picked, it's not been banned, it hasn't been a tiebreaker. This is a clean slate for both of these teams on Executioner. Yeah, and I think this is a really smart surprise pick from Calamity because they picked up Yokat. And I think this is going to be one of his signature picks. I've seen him play it before. And uh, Calamity has got to be just that confident in Yokat's ability to play this killer. And I can't wait to see what he does. Because like you said, this killer is not common in comp. And when he is played, survivors can really kind of bully him, kind of like they do with the unknown, and give him like extremely low stage results. But also, the, the skill expression is there for the killer. If they hit their shots, if they don't miss, if they don't get juked out by the survivors, if they can read through the survivors' moves, this killer can be completely unstoppable on a small map. I think the unfortunate thing for Executioner, unlike that, like the unknown we mentioned, is you don't have a whole lot in way of map presence. So even when you are able to build up pressure, the survivors are still able to play around you a lot better with just solid macro play. Whereas an unknown is able to, you know, pressure your gen while holding a hook with a good UVX shot. He's able to teleport to, you know, he's forcing you to dispel as well. So Executioner just doesn't have that. So I think it's part of why we're seeing lower stage results in general. Even when the Executioner is outplaying you in chases, you can still just hold W away from him, die in a yep. deep pocket, and you're chilling. So, but what the Executioner does have over the Unknown is just a little bit more of that consistency up close. So now, here we go. Yokat on the Executioner, on the Wrecker's Yard. He's got Forced Hesitation, Eruption, Noed, and Corrupt Intervention. That's a very interesting build. No, no totems until the end game here, so foregoing the Ruin strategy, no Undying, no Pentimento, or anything like that. And he is using the Forge Nacho Cheese skin on the Executioner. That is a great choice. I really respect that one myself. And he's going to find his first chase here. It's going to be Pedro at Shaq. The sword hits the ground, and he is going to get mind-gamed there by Pedro. Very nice movement there. He's able to draw out the Shockwave with a little spin of his camera there. That is the kind of chase that you need to see from your survivors in this set against the Executioner. The sword hits the ground once again. He goes for the shot, and Pedro dodges out on it. Really nice movement there, but he's actually going to take a hit and step on the trail. This could be trouble, Cole, if he can get this down. Absolutely, and with, with Pain Resonance being banned on these Tier 2 killers, and also Pop not being in play, Yokot has no incentive to not just cage these survivors. He doesn't have to worry about playing around the DF either, so that will be a down on to Pedro at 5 gens. And there was some progress here, so we expected there was a, a teammate, possibly. But Yokot will be opting for a pickup. One gen is completed, possibly a second on the way. Actually, yes, they are doubling this gen, so there could be two gens popping for this first hook. Uh, and you commented on his build. I think the Force Hesitation is the interesting one to me, because everything else is fairly standard. We see Noed, I think, more consistently on Executioner than any other killer, just because even the most confident Executioner players are expecting that they're going to go to endgame, unless the survivors, you know, make massive mistakes. And if they do, then you don't need Noed anyway. You've basically already won the set. So Noed very sensible but we know executioner is able to really punish hook situations because you can use that shockwave to tag both players at once the unhooker and the unhook e and with force hesitation if that's a down a one for one you can tunnel out the unhooked person very very quickly yokot possibly going for that but so far he's not proxying that hook very tightly yeah, this unhook situation is going to be really important, Cole, because Pedro is tormented. So unhook now coming in. He's actually going to go early to hit Doc off of the uh, off of the unhook, and he's actually not going to go for the down on Doc, but he's going to try to wait out Pedro's borrowed time. 
Pedro is tormented here. If Yo-Cat can get this down and decide to cage, this could really change the game in favor of Calamity. And really nice play there from Marco. Even though he takes the hit, he comes in and throws the pallet for Pedro to make sure he doesn't take a shockwave. That is the kind of team play that you need to see from the survivors in an executioner set. And I think it's actually going to cause Yo-Cat to get a little bit lost, and he might not be able to find Pedro here. Uh, he's got him in his sights now already. No, he's still this got Pedro at the broken truck. Yeah, this is not a safe place now. The elevation can help out Pedro here, but so far, Pedro just holding W. He's been playing fairly greedy so far. That seems to be the playbook for him. But he did have a, a nice flare earlier. He has a teammate coming into body block for him. Not easy to do against the Executioner's ranged hit, but so far, Pedro with the flares, and really just having a teammate around to drop the pallets for him so he can continue to greed and still have the safety there. Executioner is one of those killers that is very, very incentivizing to pre-drop pallets against him, as Zeno now will be the fourth injured survivor, Doc actually, and Marco's resetting in the distance. But Yoka is building up some pressure here, but unfortunately for him, it is not materialized into a second hook. Yeah, he's just been missing these shockwaves here, and the survivors of Elysium have been playing for each other so well, dropping the pellets for each other and able to flare out on that shockwave. And, I mean, that's exactly what you need in this set. You need to have perfect chase against those shockwave attacks. And he's actually going to now break off onto Pedro once again. I think he thought for a second there that he needed to start going for fresh hooks, but now he's going to find Pedro again. He needs to hit this shockwave, and he is going to hit it. Pedro down near the edge map. Will he choose the cage here? He will. Does he know where Pedro is going to be sent with this cage? That is the critical question here, Cole. Yeah, that fourth gen popping as well, and we should be seeing in the near future how much no-ed value Yokot is going to get. Now, I would assume everyone in this game is expecting Yokot to have no-ed. Basically, every executioner is going to be running it. If you do not, you're super confident. And Yokot has not revealed all of his perks just yet. They know he's got a hidden perk. It will probably be no ed. As now, as, as another fresh hook onto Zeno. Doc going for the FTP onto Pedro is interesting here. I'm not sure I fully agree with that depending on the gen progress because, well, the no ed could be coming in soon. And if you're going, and, and honestly, you might not want to give a fresh hook over on Doc here, but we'll see if that pays off as now Doc being kind of zoned to the edge map. We'll be giving Yokot over his fourth hook of the game and the third fresh hook. Keep in mind, of course, that every cage counts the same as a hook, according to our scoring. Pedro will now have to be extra careful to stealth, but because he is the one who is on death hook, he's the prime target for a no-ed uh, no tester in the near future. Yeah, and I think I, I agree with you about that FTP, Cole. We're at a point in the game where Yokat is not really going to be going hard for the tunnel out. Um, so, okay, so last generator is going to pop there. It's better for Yokat to try to secure fresh hooks right now. He's got four stages going into endgame. Noed has just activated, and he's going to be on the prowl looking for, hopefully, I'm pretty sure he wants Marcos here. Oh, for sure. And oh, we see some progress on the gate. Actually, they're very close. Against, like, wait, they got the gate done entirely. That's two, possibly three survivors out already, and the blind coming in. These survivors are getting pushed at the door. Three survivors out. They started that... What the hell just happened? Calamity was able to finish that gate so fast, and I don't see anything affecting the gates in those perks there either. Just incredible stealth from whoever was on that door. I mean... The survivors of Elysium here, they really put on a show here. Great chases against the Executioner. They were able to avoid a tunnel out. Uh, they were able to drop pallets for each other and keep those chases going. And I guess Yokat just kind of got lost in the end and wasn't able to find the gate in time. It seems like they started the gate the split second he was no longer looking at it, and they had the whole crew there ready to go. Like... He, he saw that the other gate was not being worked, looked back over, and it was already everyone out. I, I'm i a little bit speechless on that one. That's only four stages and three fresh, so we're going to have an extremely easy time playing around that WinCon, deciding, all right, well, I guess I can just tunnel one guy out and then face camp someone in endgame and I win. Basically, that's all he has to do. That that could have been so many more stages for Yokot, but just that endgame was... 
honestly bizarre. Yeah, and that's exactly kind of what we um, told you guys to expect to see on the Executioner set. It's a killer that has a lot of potential, but there's also so much the survivors can do to extend those chases for a really long time. When, uh, when you're playing Executioner in your public matches, you might feel unstoppable, like the survivors have no idea what to do against you and they can't dodge your shots. But when you're playing against the best survivors in the world, uh, it's actually really hard to hit them, even up close. I mean, you just you saw all of those camera movements and like nice little AD key presses that Pedro was doing in his chases makes it so hard for the executioner to get anything going, and uh, it leads to him really often having these four to six stage results. Oh yeah, I, Pedro had some fantastic chases. There were so many scenarios that he played where he had to make a correct read on what Yokot was going to do. He made the correct read and it paid off. He had some teammates to cover for him, but a lot of that was just Pedro's individual mechanics in that chase. We were wondering if maybe this was a surprise pick for Elysium, if they were not expecting to play against this, but they appeared to be very well prepared so far. Yeah, so now going into this next set, we're going to have Zeno on the Executioner, which is really not something that we've seen him play, but, I mean, it's Zeno, so we're pretty sure he can play every killer to a pretty decent level, and his win condition is going to be five stages here for the win. Oh yeah, very easy. Even if you are playing a killer that you're not super confident on, I feel like a five stage win con is very very comforting at least you know it takes a lot of pressure off your shoulders uh, but because executioner are traditionally a low stage result anyway from the perspective of calamity survivors if you have to go for that three stage game realistically executioner is one of those killers that you'd want to do that against i'd say maybe doctor might be another candidate for that but and they do have the advantage of, hey, maybe their survivor team is especially prepared for this. They're the one that picked it. I'm assuming they've been doing a lot of in-houses here. Yokot's not really a survivor player, so you can just scrim against him repeatedly. So I'm expecting still some good results from Calamity, even if it does not materialize into a win, as Zeno pulling up with a very similar build. He has gone for Agitation over Eruption, so the basement plays are a little bit more risky. And he's gone for double range instead of range plus, I believe, duration was what Yokot was running. First chase onto Pedro Hertz at the school bus. Interesting that both teams have a Marco and a Pedro of some form or another. Yeah, so there's actually no slowdown from Zeno here, which is really interesting. It's kind of just like he's accepting that his killer is not really designed to get a huge result, and he just needs that no ed and forced hesitation, as well as being able to choose where his hook spots go. And two missed shockwaves at the beginning is not what you want if you're an Elysium fan, but if you're a Calamity fan, this is the signs of life you're hoping for, for them to be able to take this upset win. Oh yeah, and we see from that gen progress, certainly we've had two survivors doubling that gen. Pedro Hertz also revealing his balance landing, no other reason to run up that hill. He is not Kate Bush. Zeno will be looking out for whoever is working on this track gen. He has found Rocket. Shockwave not quite reaching despite that double range. He is going to commit to Rocket on this broken bus. A little bit unfortunately for Elysia or for the Calamity survivors, they have not gotten a crane. When you are on Wrecker's Yard, you have two of these tiles here where you can get a crane, a bus, or the uh, broken truck, and you are guaranteed a broken truck at one of them. So the crane is not guaranteed, that is the stronger tile, but uh, yeah, they don't get that. There will be an M1 onto Rocket who will take his distance away into a corrupted generator. One gen being completed. Rocket just holding W as Pater Hurst was earlier. Zeno holding his shockwave down, but I think he's just trying to leave a torment trail on that loop because Rocket is holding W and Zeno certainly does not have the range to hit that. He's full sending it on these shockwaves and it's not paying off. And I feel like this is a little bit of, you know, a misread on the ability of the executioner to just hit. I don't think Digital World will ever make that 50 50 on this. And the shockwave goes through on the palace, and Rocket will be dying on the basement. And with no gen regression, there's no reason for him to not just. Oh, well, okay, he's gonna cage. He's actually gonna choose to cage here. Very interesting. And, I mean, executioner players will know that in certain situations, you can judge exactly where that cage is gonna go and then you do it and you're able to get a tunnel out from it when the survivors save them. But caging somebody in the middle of the map is going to be a little bit more difficult to tell early where the survivor is going. 
because it always goes to the furthest point away from the killer. So Rocket is going to get uncaged. Zeno is going sort of toward the general area of Rocket, but uh, looks like he's going to ignore Rocket and go for Fresh Fish, which I think is really smart with his build and win condition. Yeah, Zeno has Zeno playing for freshes makes a lot of sense because we had four stages, but it was three fresh and four stages. Normally, a four stage game would be one person fully dead and a stage on someone else. But with uh, Yokai getting three freshes, Zeno cannot play for one no ed kill in the end game and the hook onto Rocket. So he has to get at least three freshes here, ideally, before going for that no ed. Actually, no, only one of the fresh Pokemon for Noah. So once he gets Pedro Hurts down here, he will be looking for Laser or Marco as possible Noah victims. I think going for this cage is just for the efficiency. A third generator is completed, and Zeno is inching dangerously close to that win condition as the end game approaches as well. Zeno should be very comfortable despite how this game is going so far. That wing con definitely. Oh, and the tag onto Marco. This is one of the survivors he needed. Yeah, and that was a really nice little flick there from Zeno. And, uh, I mean, that's how you gotta play this as an Executioner player. You really wanna be mixing up the way that you throw up with Shockwaves. He goes for another flick, and that one's gonna miss. Uh, Marco throws the, throws the pallet there. He's gonna be able to get the lie, then hold W here. That's what he needs to stay alive in this chase. But, uh, okay, so he makes this car pallet here, and there's gonna be another survivor here to throw the pallet for him. Marco is going to choose to hold W, though. He now makes it to a TL. This is not really where you want to be, but Zeno misses the prediction shot. That is, These are the dangerous shots that you really... I'm not sure if you want to be going for those when the wind condition is so close. He misses another one. Marco continuing to have good passing here. As he goes for a fake, and Zeno calls him out. Hits him with the shockwave. That camera flick, not going to work on this pallet. Not this time for Zeno. Flashlight save is also not going to be successful and he went down near basement cole with two stages and a fresh hook in basement uh things are not looking very good for calamity yep fang dying on this hook would be win con uh, with the basement hook also and noah about to activate xeno can just sit here and if you are a maybe not an executioner enthusiast but a face camp enthusiast at least this is one of the best situations to be in i believe that shockwave does go down elevation but also you may know that executioner has a limited amount of time that he can hold his power on the ground but only if you're moving around you can sit in one place with your m2 ready and you will not run out of power Zeno able to just sit here and hold his m2 out if he wants uh, Calamity well, so will the... go up in the end, but what the survivors of calamity might want to do here is have one person on the gen and then have two people immediately go to dull totems and hope that one of them will light up as the noed totem but uh it doesn't look like they're doing that as rocket is going to take a hit and with balanced landing now pedro is trying to get into the basement but Zeno is body blocking it looks like marco is not going to go second here as with a blind, Rocket is going to go down in the basement. Endurance hit up, and Rocket has adrenaline also, but Pedro is still stuck in the basement. He is going to taste the Noed, and Zeno is not going to cage him. He's just going to pick him up and exchange him in the basement. I mean, it was an adrenaline play. It was a valiant effort for Calamity, but it just ends up with another survivor in the basement. And now, with Zeno sitting on Tycon with a basement hook and Noed, Calamity Survivor is just... I don't think they physically have the time for this. Also, Zeno can see his Noed totem in that tile. You can't cleanse that without him knowing. And uh, with Rocket needing to be healed, with Marker needing to be healed, Exegate needing to be open, you would need to somehow cleanse that totem, get an Exegate open, get healed, three-man save without a one-for-one, one, and I don't think that's possible, even if Zeno makes the mother of all misplays as... Zeno will be chasing Marco off of this Noed totem. We do see Rocket also trying to cover for that basement pull. I don't think Zeno is really too concerned about this. The basement save is coming in. He doesn't need Noed to go for this because Rocket's already injured. They can cleanse Noed. It doesn't matter. I mean, is there a head-on in one like... locker? No? Rocket does not have yeah. head on. He's going into the locker. Pedro, I think, has made it out of the basement by now. Um, and yeah, it's just a standoff here at the basement locker. Uh, I mean, if they die to the entity collapse, if uh, they die to Zeno, oh, it's actually a double hit there. Laser gets in front of the shockwave there. Rocket is going to go down. Laser makes it out of the basement. But uh, the next stage here wins, and we have two survivors on the ground. 
Yeah, I mean, I think they were trying to bait head on maybe Zeno. Not sure if they have it, but with EGC already triggered, he can just sit there and let that kill them. The shot comes in on the Pedro Hertz, and also Rocket will be being grabbed into that basement in a second here. But also, if there is a head on in play, another cage actually. There is a head-on in play. Uh, head-on no longer works if you have AFK pros in the locker, so you do have a limited amount of time to use that, and that is also something that Xeno can use to play around it. So will be two escapes for Calamity. Still a fairly decent result against Executioner, but unfortunately just too steep of a win con to play against, and this will be sending us into the Clown set, which was Elysium's choice, so Xeno Clown will be the first uh, part of that. And we will be seeing Elysium take the lead 2-1 in this match. Yep, so match point now for Elysium going into the clown set that they chose. Calamity is going to lose out on the set that they chose, the Executioner. And uh, now with their backs against the wall going into the clown set, I mean, this is going to be the first time we're even seeing this killer this season. And it's in such an important game, Cole. I mean, what do you, what do you think we're... Like, give me a general idea. What do you, what do you think we're going to see from this clown? I mean, clown will probably bring force hesitation. I think that's something that's become really popular on that killer because the fact that he already has, like, slows in his base kit makes it a lot easier for clown to chain force hezzy and those, like, flask of bleach, ether, uh, you know, purple, purple bottles to make it basically impossible to actually get a successful 1v1, one for one, rather. Uh, Clown usually struggles to get that full tunnel out because the chase power isn't that good. And again, another killer, you could see no ed and see maybe six stages on, you tunnel one person out, get another with no ed, and that's, that's your game right there. Um, but those results I've seen have mostly been on Grim Pantry, and I double-checked. Clown is on Wrecker's Yard this season, so more of that. And I, I think that the, the tiles being more chainable on that map uh, will make it a little bit more skill expressive for both sides. So I'm interested to see if we'll get more or less in those six stages. Um, with with these teams having some phenomenal 1v1 players as well, I, I wonder what level of familiarity they'll have with the nuances of clown chase. If there, if there is such a thing as the nuances, I think clown enthusiasts in chat will be interested to see to what extent we see yellow bottles being used. I know that's a thing that uh, clown players... I'm not have. sure. Like, clown enthusiasts in chat... This is competitive DVD. Um, perks like perks like coup are not going to be allowed. So I don't I don't want to hear about your coup rapid brutality clown build with save the best for last. Because um, I know that's what all the pub clowns are running that really like to use the yellow bottle. Mm -hmm. But at the same but, time, uh, we're going to be seeing mm -hmm, something much more. You know, I'm just really interested to see. Like I'm thinking in my head, Elysium's doing their pick bands. What what was in Zeno's head? when he said, yeah, team, we need the clown. I'm honestly not sure. Um, I cannot pretend to guess what is going through their head, obviously. Uh, you know, we we can see what they pick and ban. We just don't see, you know, why. that Those conversations are always internal to the teams, of course, and, you know, we wouldn't leave them anyway. But um, I wonder if Clown is the killer Xeno will be cooking on yet again. Uh, certainly... I would not be surprised by a number of perks, you know, Rapid Brutality and Save the Best for Last, both perks that make a lot of sense on Clown. Probably Rapid, more likely. Forced Hezzy, another good pick, you know, because Wrecker's Yard, you can see Agi, you can see Noed. Um, I don't know if he's going to go for this no slowdown build that he had on Eggsy. Maybe he does go for some slowdown. We're about to find out as we're loading into this first trial. And we... Okay, yeah, we've got... Um, the Rapid Brutality and Force Hesitation with, this is, the purple add-on gives you a little bit stronger of an invigoration effect, and the green add-on makes your slow stronger, so Xeno really trying to min-max his speed advantage over survivors here, with the Force Hesitation for unhooked scenarios and a no at endgame, he is going to be zooming. Yeah, really interesting that we're not seeing the ether or the increased duration of the uh, increased duration of the hindrance to the survivors. And instead, he's, yeah, like you said, really just going to be trying to maximize the value of the speed from the yellow bottles, as well as the uh, speed from the rapid brutality, which we saw him get there. And it looks like first chase here onto Rocket. He's going to be 
just kind of staying at this broken truck. Skinner's going to be taking the invigoration, but he gets head-on there, misses the blind, but that was still a good head-on from uh, Marco, and Chase now continuing on Shaq. That head-on does allow the survivor and Chase to make it to Shaq. Really good play there from Calamity. That is what they need to start this match. As it uh, looks like that pink bottle is going to miss, but Rocket just vaults into it. That's going to be the first down for Zeno. Mm -hmm. mm. And that is a truly uh, horrifying clown fit. The chicken fit with a normal mm. head. Uh, uh, but we are already seeing Zeno definitely using his yellow and pink bottle in tandem. Dropping the yellow bottle first to get a speed up prepared to go. Dropping a pink bottle on the other side of the loop so that the survivor basically has no good choice but to run into him. The speed advantage is just too much and it also fundamentally changes the way that you can play some of these tiles. Rocket having to try to make a 50-50 on the window, that causes him to go down. And we have not had a, a gen popping for this. And Clown's chase power so far paying off a little bit better than Executioner's is Clown able to basically brute force some of these tiles in a way that Executioner has to try and win a mind game on. We'll see if Pedro Hurts can play this broken truck, but it's, uh, yeah, not a lot to play here. Uh, it's going to be a first hit coming in onto Pedro in what is effectively a dead zone, and now Zeno is going to be right back to the hook. This unhook is going to be so important. Is, is he going to actually be able to trigger the force hesitation? I think he got back too late. Yeah, the unhook is not going to be able to be interrupted there, and the survivor on the hook is going to be body blocking to try to prevent the force hesitation from activating, and he does get it successfully. Zeno did try to go around him there, but the basement stairs prevented him from downing laser. And I mean, that was just a perfectly timed unhook from Calamity to deny value from most of Xeno's build. Yeah, and we got two gems popping for it. Rocket makes it to not only the edge of the map, but also a somewhat safer tile. Obviously, having only a pallet here against Clown means you are going to die here eventually. If you don't have a window to chain, much like Doctor, but we have Marco taking a hit for him off screen. Rocket pre-dropping this edge map pallet. This is maybe a little bit more playable, but this should be a down shortly. That is going to be Rocket's second hook, and we have three injured survivors as well. Zeno possibly in a situation to go for a slug, but no, we'll just drop that yellow bottle to get a faster hook. Marco cranking out the bus gen, but this is very close to that hook, so Zeno might be able to interrupt this. And it looks like he will not be coming here, looking for someone else. He sees yeah, and this Pedro. With, with no slowdown here, the survivors of Calamity simply have to be clean and chase. Um, the For the People survivor is on the hook right now, so this next unhook onto Rocket is going to be pretty dangerous here. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to make it anywhere as uh, this time. Surely Zeno is going to hold this hook closer just to make sure that he gets forced hesitation value. But I think, Cole, the survivors of Calamity might be just letting Rocket die because they know about the perks. Yeah, I think at this point, well, they, they know that if Zeno just sits here, they can't actually save against this. The one-for-one one with Force Hesitation, with those mm. bottles, you, you can't do anything about it. And I think they're going to be expecting the Noet also. This is par for the course. You get one survivor dead in exchange for all of your gens. Someone else dies to Noet, and then that's just game 2k6, easy. You go on to the next one, and maybe you win off of an extra hook that you got along the way. But we have... Build two gens on the map, technically. Surely they're both extremely high progress. Zeno should be able to... Oh, well, this one's not that close. Pedro Hurts, we already have seen. He's the bounce on a survivor. He will go ahead and take his distance away from this. Now, looks like this hill gen and the deep corner gen, and also Shaq being up is a fairly decent regen. Zeno has been able to get here in time before it actually pops. The survivor not on his screen just yet. <laughs> He's going to go for a dry kick onto this gen. I'm not sure what he's expecting to find here. Is there a survivor stealthing in this area? And it looks like he's not. Okay, so he is going to find laser there on this relatively safe pile. He steps back, goes for the pink bottle. And does laser make that pellet? No, he does not. He gets stunned through it. Those hits against the clown always feel so bad for the survivors too. And laser is going to be making his way as far away from the gens as he can get. And I, you don't make that laser. You do not make that pallet against the clown. And oh, Zeno, huge mistake there. He doesn't lunge. He wanted to go for a grab, I think, Cole. But he definitely had the distance to get that hit. I, I think he was expecting maybe laser might fake the, the vault. It's the only reason I can think of to, to not 
fling early. We do have a gen popping that surely was Lazer's gen in that deep pocket. Pedro will almost certainly be back on the hill. Marco, I'm sure, being useful as well as Zeno trying to mind game the stuff pop, the gen popping, and then we'll also, because that gen popped right before that down, that will reveal the noed, Zeno going to opt for a slug onto laser and to look for his other two survivors to try and get more than just that six stage. Because that down happens right as the exegate is activated, Zeno has the liberty to go for this if he's able to find someone. But so far, not catching anyone stealthing edge map. Pedro sitting, sitting on this hill with that balance landing. Sir, surely in Zeno's sights now. Probably not wanting to commit to that as we have Marco stealthing on the other side of the map, trying to pressure that pickup onto Laser, who has died on this exit gate. So Zeno able to sort of look out for Laser's slug as well as that gate, and trying to hold cross map vision on this other gate, but it remains to be seen. Calamity survivors can just play this slow. The gate has started to be in progress. Zeno might not be able to interrupt this. He's not going to try. Uh, Calamity is playing this really smart by not picking up laser until the time is right. Because if they do it too early, Zeno is just going to zoom over there with the yellow bottle. They've waited all the way until the last second where Zeno has actually committed all the way to the other side of the map, the other door. Uh, looks like Pedro is going to get pulled out of the locker there, but um, he's just going to get hooked next to the totem now. And I think that is going to seal a six stage result for Calamity. There's no way they're going to try anything here. Yeah, I mean, Zeno reading for a little bit more. It ends up still being a 2k6, just on a different survivor, Laser and Marco making it out the door. So, honestly, very expected result. The, the clown chases are honestly a little bit telegraphed. If you just play it methodically with the pink and yellow bottom of tandem, you are always going to outspeed the survivor. They have to just drop the pallet, the pallet's broken, and you move on to the next loop. So, it's a little bit harder for players to outplay each other on that chase. And certainly not going to have more available, so we'll have Calamity coming in with that, with our own clown. I'm not sure who it's going to be. My spidey senses tell me it will be Rocket, but it could very well be someone else trying to see if they can secure a seven stage result or 2k6 with, or six stages with three fresh. In this win condition here of three stages, or six stages with three fresh, Calamity's back is against the wall here. This is match point. They will be knocked down to the lower bracket if they can't win this game, and Elysium will win 3-1 to one in the series. But if we see the Clown from Calamity meet the win condition, we will be going to the final tiebreaker. Okay. Oh yeah, and that, I'm, I'm really hoping that we get to see that Oni set. It's a very volatile set. We haven't seen a whole lot of it this season, and... Um... You know, if, if we're going to put any killer player on a volatile killer, it should be Zeno. That will be a very, uh, very high-octane set. And, of course, it does appear that we will have Rocket on that clown. I was right. Um, you know, and if there's one player whose clown mechanics I'd want to bet uh, my tournament life on, it would be Rocket. I feel like Rocket, yeah, I don't, I don't one... know if he's a clown player, but he strikes me as the type who would secretly love that uh <laughs> that killer. There's one person that you don't want to be on the other end of a come wreckers men or message. It's got it's got to be Rocket. So <laughs> killer is on wreckers yard. I think Rocket is going to be your man. So I'm interested to see how he plays this. I know the the builds are set in advance, but I've been very impressed with Zeno's use of zero slowdown builds today. I think that that's something that we've been seeing from him not just this week, but also in the last few weeks of the tournament. It's a new innovation that he's made, and I haven't really been seeing any other killers adopting that. I think with these two killers, with Executioner and Clown, you kind of know that your 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 game plan is going to be tunnel one survivor out, get someone else with no ed, and that's your win condition. The the downs and the tunnel outs are gonna be a little bit slower than they would on other killers. Um so I think there's maybe a little bit less incentive to go for those slowdown builds because you're not going to be winning off of holding a three gen after the tunnel out. You're going to lose your gens before then. Um, and, and if you are in a situation to do that, it's off the back of survivor mistakes, so you should probably win the set anyway. So I think it's because of the sets themselves and not so much uh, some like next level read on the meta. There's a reason why, even with a little bit of a cooking on that Wraith build with Eruption and Surge, He's still bringing slow down on on the sets where it it actually makes sense. 
Yep. So all of the survivors ready here. The uh, survivors of Elysium here have been playing so well today, Cole. They've been playing altruistically for each other. And I'm wondering how that's going to play out in the clown set as well. We've already seen some really great body blocks in the Wraith set as well as the uh, Executioner set. People dropping pallets for each other and everything. And in this clown set where so often you have unavoidable hits coming in from the clown, I'm wondering if we're going to be seeing the same level of altruistic play here from Elysium. Mm -hmm. And I think with Clown, at least, because it's still an M1 killer at the end of the day, the fact that you can force more altruistic play against them should be a nice thing for Elysium. With Executioner, obviously, you, you can play to drop the pallets for your teammates, but you can't really body block against that M2. At the end of the day, you're still dependent on them dodging it. You know, you can't pilot for them. And look at that. Xeno was a P3 Clown. Rocket's a P10. That is quick maths. 10 is greater than 3. Obviously, the set's already over, and Rocket has opted for Rancor over Agitation, which will give him a little bit more uh, info throughout the game, and he has gone for that full pink bottle slowdown. He's not going for the extra yellow speed, so his slowdown will be a lot more oppressive. He does have four position as well. He didn't get a lot of value in the previous game. Rocket will be zoning Pedro to the edge map tile. And we'll see. These sits of become that much harder to play, but so far, Pedro is winning them. So Rocket now going to be getting down onto... Wait, okay, no, sorry. That is not a down. I thought Pedro was injured because of his doubled over coughing from the bottle, so my bad there. Pedro is going to make Shaq. He's going to immediately drop that pallet, and uh, looks like... You know Break is going to be... Up yeah, almost like we were in the Executioner set there, so, you know, almost dropped that pallet for Pedro. And uh, Rocket's going to be committing all the way to the other side of the map here, down by the corner, and another yellow bottle, or another pink bottle there on Pedro. I mean, Pedro is just taking him on a tour. Hold. Yeah, but these pallets are being shredded through. Rocket just boot forcing everything with purple bottles, not even trying to set up the yellow bottle for full. First gen is completed. This will be a down on Roger Strutley. Rocket, sorry, on Pedro. Rocket reading that quick and quiet play. And, you know, the thing that's really, really funny about Clown is when you have this really, really powerful slowdown, it makes the survivors, like, barely move when they walk and open their own controller. And looks like the survivors are going to be sticking out the Shack Gen. That is a pretty devastating loss for uh, Rocket there. He really wanted to be able to get a kick on that gen after getting the hook. But still, a survivor in basement is pretty good. This is the same sort of setup that we saw last game with the first hook being traded for two generators. Yeah, but the that track gen is usually a part of any three gen that you might get. Now, yes, you're not generally playing for holding gens as clown, but at the same time, you're also getting your your uh, your first push a little bit later. So what needs to be seen here is if the resources that were dropped in that first chase will be sufficient for Rocket to get some much quicker follow-up chases, but so far we don't know. He has tagged a different survivor. Come back in time for the unhook. The pink pose with the pink bottle. We'll see if that'll get him a tunnel out on to Pedro here. We did get a tag on someone else. And the grab! It's the grab! Incredible play there from Rocket. He used the pink bottle and I think also body blocking the window to force the medium vault there. Really nice play from Rocket. Pedro put right back up on his second hook and also I believe that was Doc takes a tag on the way down. Um, we still haven't actually seen the forced hesitation off the, off the unhook come in. Um, but now we've got two survivors injured for Elysium and they have to go for another basement save here. There's only one other person working a generator. I mean, two generators left is a pretty good spot, but not if Pedro is going to die in that basement. Yep, and Rocket has a good vantage point and that Rancor information, so he knows where everyone is. He has confirmation of where that reset is happening as well, which will help him cut off these resets. If he's expecting one of these to go for it, since they were the two survivors that had been pushing for that basement save earlier he's probably expecting them to be the ones to go for it again and not Zeno, who had just finished the third gen of the game rocket able to just hold this gen here and i think elysium's gen progress is not as good as it was in the previous game so 
if they're not able to get this pull into Pedro now, they have two gens left, but there's very little progress on either of them. And this will make it much more likely for Rocket to get the win con that he needs. Yeah, and hit coming in there onto Marcos, a survivor dead at two gens is not what you want against the clown. Rocket is getting really close to meeting this win condition here as one generator is almost done for the survivors of Elysium, but the last one has only just been started. So Marcos here, he needs to have a great chase. He goes for the vault onto the double window, but Rocket is going to call it out there and win that 50-50. Marcos is going to go down as one generator pops in the distance, but this hook here is so crucial, Cole, going into the end game with Moed. Now he just needs to find either Doc or Zeno. It doesn't matter. You can just let Marcos have his first hook. They can pull him. It does not matter. Your Noed down and camp on a third fresh survivor is the win condition here. Or even Don't forget if... about Rancor. Yeah, and also, yeah, with Zeno being the Rancor as well and with Noed, Zeno is basically permanently in danger, and they're going to know this. We will have the chase on the Zeno now as well, so even if they find a way to cleanse that Noed, Zeno is just in a whole lot of trouble here as the spam of the pink bottles will slow him down quite a bit he's not gonna make it to that crane there's no pallet here this is the third fresh hook as well so with xeno going on the hook one more stage for rocket is all he needs he does not even need to secure another kill so he can look for marcos again or for doc it does not matter he can also just sit here and play the time game because even with noed even um Sorry, you can pop the gems, get a gate open, you can cleanse Node right away, but Zeno is just permanently exposed to that. Yeah, and fast pull coming in there onto Zeno, that is probably the correct choice for Elysium, but I mean, it's not a good choice to have to make. They're running out of options here, Cole, as one stage of any kind here will mean the win for Rocket and Calamity. He's not choosing to continue chase onto Zeno. He wants to try to find a survivor in a better spot here. Goes up on the hill. He's looking at his gens. He does have somewhat of a three gen here, if I'm being honest. And a lot of these resources were dropped in that first chase. The down onto Marcos. Also, I believe no endgame perks for Calamity, uh, sorry, for Elysium either. With the pickup coming onto Marcos, this will not only be. Yeah, this will be the. No, it's not for a fresh. Doc is still fresh. But this is the sixth hook with three fresh, which means Calamity has secured the win in the final set, and we will be going to that only tiebreaker in the end after all. As Rocket will continue chasing Zeno, there's one gen left to be completed. Zeno will be going down here, and Rocket can look for Doc and try to secure a 4k1. Yeah, and remember, if Doc finishes this gen, Zeno will be moriable on the ground as well. So Doc is uh, speeding up Zeno's death here by doing this gen. It looks like he's gonna stick the gen. And really nice pull out, really nice mind game there actually from Doc. He thought, or he was able to get back on the gen. Zeno was not, or Rocket was not gonna go for the grab. He was gonna try to kick the gen while Doc was standing right in front of it. So, I mean, the, the result is already set, but I, that was a really nice play there from Doc. He was trying to play around his adrenaline but uh, unfortunately not yeah. playing out there. And here we comes the clown. Uh, very centered, unfortunate. Oh, there we go. Now you can see it. Well. Um, yeah. That's uh, this, this is one of the, this is one of the Mori's ever made. Um, not one of the ones that I would have been excited to see on a tournament broadcast myself, but it's still nice to be able to see a rank for Mori on the stream, isn't it, Cole? Well, I don't understand. When, when we saw Zeno's chicken clown outfit, right, why did they give clown a chicken outfit exactly? Is it subtle product placement for KFC? Finger licking good? I can't even respond to that. That was... <laughs> that, was uh, that was one of the jokes ever made. That's what you get for putting Americans on the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're tied two to two here. Calamity wins the clown set that Elysium wanted. So we're going to be going into the final set very shortly here, guys. It is going to be the Oni. And if there was any set that I would want in a tiebreaker, it would absolutely be the Oni. And I what I mean, would you agree with me there, Cole? Yes, and especially with these two teams. I, I want to see, you know, 
I, I especially after we've been denied Oni sets like all season, both both Oni and Wesker, honestly, but mostly Oni. Um, yeah, I, I want to see who the Oni is for Calamity. It appears that it will be Yokot. I was almost expecting Hein. Um, but uh, yeah, with with Yokot being such a phenomenal Billy player, I'm not at all surprised. He's an Oni player as well. And I want to see if uh, Elysium, with their you know phenomenal 1v1 players, will be able to deny this first hit for quite some time. Uh, and also if we'll be able to see in the second trial if Xena will be able to just completely pop off like he is wont to do. Yep, and these Oni games, they always follow a similar starting formula, don't they, Cole? It is a pure trial of M1 chase skill for both sides right at the beginning of the game. I mean, your survivors are just thrown into the fire. Nobody wants to be the first person to give a hit to the Oni. And, I mean, it's going to depend on the tiles that are run, mind games from the killer. Uh, and, I mean, if a survivor is able to lead the powerless Oni on a long chase, I'm, that is just absolutely game-changing and really influences the result. Yeah, 100%. I think also... I'm curious to see the choice to bring Brutal or Bam or possibly neither. I believe Oni exists at a tier of play now where we've banned Pain Resonance from him, which might be one of the reasons why people are not as likely to pick it anymore. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I would expect to see Eruption for sure. Oni is one of those killers who likes running Eruption anyway. It's such a great perk for him because of how quickly you can get back to that gen with the aura reading. It's much scarier on Oni. I feel like some of these other killers have been dipping into eruption purely because they have no other choice. Um, if memory and serves, it's not just mm -hmm. it's not just for using the aura reading either. Eruption is extremely good on killers who want to set up slowly and then do all their damage in a big burst. So in that way, eruption both of the qualities of eruption are perfect for Oni. Yeah, if memory serves correctly, I think the last time we saw Calamity play. Uh, they were bringing a triple hex build, right? Because now we're at a tier of play where Pendimento is allowed. Onis will be bringing Ruin and like crowd control. Um, and, and, and because they can get crowd control value as well, similar to Bam, um, the threat of Pentimental coming in later is often worse, and you just leave those totems up. It makes Oni's chase a lot better. You have that constant gen pressure when you start getting your snowball coming in, and I would expect to see something like that, actually, on second consideration. And we'll be seeing shortly. Actually, Yokot has decided to just full send it with both Bam and Brutal. I think that's a new one. Uh, often Oni's picking between one of those to make that first chase a little bit better. Yokot says... He needs both here as Yokat starting, setting the tone in the tiebreaker for Calamity. He's going to find a survivor at main, but I doubt that's what he wants to do his first chase at. And it, yeah, he's going to find a survivor that he can zone away from the main building. This is so much better for Yokat. He's going to find uh, it's Marcos here at this edge map tile. Wants to zone him away from that jungle gym that's right next to him. He's probably going to be trying to generate bloodlust here. And if he can, this might be a first hit. No, he doesn't have the distance. Marcos is going to get a stun there. Yokat misjudged that bloodlust a little bit, and generators are already being worked on the side of Elysium. Yeah, Marcos with a phenomenal job of not giving over that first hit. Oh, this, these windows chained together are kind of gross. He will be running up this hill. He gets an Ormond tile down here, but no balance landing. He will make it to the Ormond tile pallet. He decides to greet it. He's got Shack window available to him. This might be a hit. It will not be. Yokot now revealing his BAM, the pallet being dropped will zone Marcos a little bit, but now Brutal Strength also being revealed if Marcos is used to that Brutal Strength timing, which he should be, runs back up the middle of the map, he's got an eye filler to play as well, the first gen, I believe that is certainly being doubled, as we have That's this That's a really important play. gen to get done. Oh yeah, one of the things that we see a lot on CT macro is you may want to double or even triple in nurse sets, that first gen, to make sure that you break any four or even five gens that can appear topside. The bloodlust not being enough to secure that tag. Marcus now running back towards Shaq, and Yokot decides to break Chase, deciding he needs to hold the other gens. He sees two survivors working this one. Yeah. That chase not resulting in a hit is absolutely huge for Elysium and pretty devastating for Calamity. 
as now he's forced to completely leave Marcos and now he's in chase on Pedro and he's in another area that has had no pallets used. This tile is a little bit less safe as he's going to call him out and first hit comes in for Yokat onto Pedro. The blood is finally flowing and Pedro is going to go straight to main. Notice that he slow vaulted that window there because he wanted to give as little blood as possible to the Oni, but the power has been achieved. Yokat has the blood fury. He's walking away, leaving Pedro. He wants to find a better, more opportune position to use this blood fury, and he's going to see some survivors at main. Not quite what he wants, though. He's waiting for the perfect opportunity here, Cole, when he's going to pop this blood fury. Yeah, he does have a loose four gen top side. Not a, not a great one, but something like it. And the thing is, all these bottom side gens have the, the pallets around them, the good pallets at least, already broken. This filler pallet in top mid is also dropped, but the main resource survivors have left is all of main building. It always has these two pallets. They are both still standing. Both breakable walls in main have been broken as well. Yokot, however, not having eyes on any survivors. Actually, no, there is someone in this tile here. The reset just came in onto Pedro as well. Pedro now being back in chase. Yokot can pop power on him. Actually popping power on Zeno instead. Knowing Pedro's around here too. We have another gen about to Pop. And it's very bold to be working this gen while Oni is in power, but we should see a second gen popping here right away. Zeno will be going down, and is there going to be a continuation onto Pedro? No, Yoka will go ahead and go ahead and pick up Zeno. And having seen Pedro... That... Yeah, there was a missed head on there from Pedro in the corner of that tile. Uh -huh. he, jumped, he jumped out of the locker as Zeno went down there. And I think that's why Zeno was pathing close to that locker. It was a little bit of weird pathing from Zeno, but it makes sense if you think about Pedro in that locker. Yep, we're not waiting for his eruption to kick that gen. And also knowing that, well, we saw Pedro here earlier as the reset. So as soon as he hooks him, he can get his power right back because of the blood that was there. Found Pedro positioning for that pull as well. And with power being available, it's going to be basically impossible for a survivor to try and go for his unhook, but they do it anyway. And there is a generator here, a generator in main building, and one in these tiles nearby. Yokot does have this three gen around this corner of the map where the hook is being incurred. So Zeno is just beelining for the other side, has to get away from this at all costs. Yokot expects someone else to just walk the head on, and the Pedro will be the one taking this down. And that means Yokot can certainly drag him back into his gen spread, but he will commit to the slug and look for other survivors wants to find this reset goal and that that fast unhook you know that came in because the survivors of elysium think they have the momentum right now next dash coming in from yokat he's going to miss it again stun comes down smash hit for marcos he's not going to use it though and he's actually gonna any means the pallet because ryokat has left he's going back to his other slug pedro still on the ground for now but window vault is going to come out from one survivor there He's going to finally take his concession, pick up Pedro, and drag him back into the 3 gen. But with only eruption, it's going to be pretty difficult for him to hold this 3 gen. The survivors of Elysium, they're going for these fast pulls against an Oni with power because they know they have the momentum on their side. They've completed a lot of generators, and there are only two stages on the board. But they need to be careful because these Oni sets can go out of control so quickly for the survivors if they keep people injured. And they're working gens injured, Cole. Yeah, not only that, they're, they're injured, there's no good resources left, they're trading here, and there's a lot of blood in that main building now because of Rocket, sorry, Doc working that gen injured. Yokot gonna go ahead and make sure he has not gotten back on it, pop the gen for eruption, and he can gather his power up here as well for sure, and hook Zeno whenever he feels like it. He's got Zeno on the ground, he most certainly has enough blood to get his power here. It's just a little bit spread around the main building and this corner area. So the one generator that is not in the three gen is going to pop. He has eruption primed on the most important generator. Still one survivor on the ground. He's now going to choose to pick Zeno up and put him on the hook. He has him in the perfect hook spot. The power that comes in here is going to be so important, Cole. I mean, if he could get one or even multiple downs with this power, get eruption onto that most progressed generator, that would be absolutely huge for Yokat. Fast pull going to come in. The survivors of Elysium know that they have to get out of this area. Yeah, Yokat now 
Siding to he wants Zeno out of the game, but Doc will certainly be on that main building generator. So the timing of this down onto Zeno and the eruption proc, Yofat says, I don't have time for this. I'm not playing on a long wall. I need to get this guy now. And Doc, if he had balanced landing, it's not on off cooldown because we hear Jake stagger, so he's forced to play this car palette. It will buy him some time. Yokot can pop power here. At this point, the survivors aren't going to be cleansing, or healing rather. They have so much blood on the map already. There's not really much reason to just not be in your power 24-7 now, as Zeno has been doubling this gen with Marcos, the only healthy survivor. Yokot has I'm to get really... it down eight. Okay, so he's finally popping power. I'm surprised he wasn't doing it earlier, especially when those survivors were arrogantly working the main building generator. And... Blood Fury going to come out. He's going to go onto the eye filler. Now going back to the main building. He's looping all the way around. He really wants Doc here. Comes up the stairs. He's going to go back down. He wants to try to fake Doc out, but Doc is ready for it. He knows that if he drops, he has the balance landing. Next dash going to come out off of the sea, off of the roof there for Yokat. He's actually going to leave and go back to the other generator. He's trying to balance so many generators at once right now. I mean, the survivors are just running him around, and there was a survivor in a locker right there. It was Pedro, and he didn't get found. So now he's finally going to come back to the main building. He's going to walk Doc down, and finally gets down. Looks like it's going to be two generators exploding there. He's going to have aura, but that power, it took so long, Cole, that the aura reading from Eruption doesn't matter. Tripling that? I think they might have been tripling that. Now power coming back in. This might be enough to catch Marcos out on that possible save onto Doc. Four survivors being in the match is still pretty brutal for Yokat. Doc gets picked up, and now that means he's going to know there's two survivors in the main building. He does pull Pedro out of the locker, but I think Elysium should almost certainly pop the last gen for this. Two gens high progress, even though it's a good three gen. Yes, they are going to pop main building. Also the adrenaline for, for Doc coming in. <laughs> But with a lot of blood left on the map, this is enough for Yokot to try and secure even more downs, more hooks, more kills. Oni certainly has the ability to do that in the endgame. And it looks like these gates are decent for him. Well, he's popped his power now without really knowing where anybody is, and that can be pretty dangerous for an Oni to do. He's not... Okay, so he is going to find... Zeno on this gate is going to go down in the corner, but Yoka is not done yet. He has to slug that. He wants even more. He's going back to the hook. Unhook comes in onto Pedro. He's dashing here into the tile. Pedro's body blocking with the endurance, and he's just trying to go around him. He's not taking the hit on Pedro. Falls off of the hill. Can't go for the flick there, and the power is going to run out. Pole. Yeah, he will possibly get another stage off of Pedro here. Both Pedro and Zeno only worth one stage each. So not ideal targets. You really did want to get Doc there. Zeno does get picked up and he was picked up by a gate. But now with the power being run out, it's possible for someone else to come give a body block for Pedro who just barely makes that vault. And the greed can be punished here. Now there's not a lot of good powers. There is an Ormond tile here. Most likely Pedro will be a goner. But they can also just play for his out on the hatch here if he's able to juice long enough on this. Now, one of these survivors is quite a bit away from that uh, exit gate that's been opened across the map, so it will be on the survivors to time their escapes to allow Pedro, but no, the Oni is between him and the hatch, so... Well, okay, we're not going to kick it. We do have the Ormontal Palette. Pedro might be a little W if he were towards the door. I'm not sure how close to the top of the map it is, but, uh, okay, enough blood is going to come out from the power there. Pedro is going to have to seriously pull some magic here if he wants to get out. He's going to be crouching at this eye filler here. Yoka lets go of the dash. He wants to make sure he doesn't miss this. Pedro is actually just going to walk him down, I think. And yeah, that's going to be the uh, M1 in the power for the Oni. Pedro is going to go down. That's going to be one more stage to Yokat, and just a shining performance from the Elysian survivors here in this tiebreaker. I, I'm assuming their Oni is going to be Zeno, and he's got to be feeling really good about this killer set coming up. Absolutely. Knowing that you don't have to play for a 4K is always a comfort. Knowing, hey, six stages, six stages or less, or you know, that's really hard to play 
for plan these survivors they're gonna have to be absolutely on point on those chases they need to make sure that they can um you know not get that power over so early yeah and this is just gonna be a very tough test for the survivors of calamity coming up next and i think win or lose here calamity can be pretty happy with how they played today um, whether they are able to meet or not the win condition in this next Oni set. Uh, they've put up some really great results today against a team that many consider to be the best in the world. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were expecting some explosive gameplay. I think, unfortunately, some of the, the chases not quite working out the way that um, Yokot would have liked the even in his power it seems like the the elysium survivors were doing a fantastic job of making his power either not get the down or take so long to get the down it took the whole thing he had, he had such a good position to hold in that end game but with all four survivors being up they were able to split pressure between the main building and the the tile furthest away from it and they just pulled yokot apart at the seams the chases weren't coming in fast enough and that's what Zeno's going to have to do better on, but I feel like Zeno should be able to do better on that. Yep, so Zeno is a tried and true Oni player, and I mean, not just that, somebody that time and time again comes through in the clutch for this team. In a tiebreaker set, there's really not another killer that you would rather have than Zeno. So I can't cannot overstate here just how difficult this situation is for Calamity. Um, to be up against a killer like Zeno, with a tough win con and a final tiebreaker. Um, I mean, it's really, this is the, uh, this is a perfect start to the season nine playoffs. We wanted to see this Oni set and now we're getting it. I can't, I mean, I can't wait to see what we get in the uh, games later today, but it's, I couldn't have asked for a better set between uh, Calamity and Elysium. Absolutely. I, I, I've missed these Oni sets so much. Uh, and I think it's, it's actually nice to see, that the Oni just doesn't absolutely steamroll survivor teams once he gets his power. There is, you know, some skill expression for both sides in playing out those chases. I want to see what Zeno's bringing to the table. Uh, I, I did like the choice to bring both Brutal and Bam for that first chase from Yokot. I don't know if it's necessarily optimal, but it's certainly creative, and it did seem to help him out a little bit. And I want to see if Zeno's able to bring something spicier i was half expecting to see like a ruin crowd control penty build maybe Zeno will go for that and especially since we've seen how much Zeno has been doubling down on slugging with wraith and billy surely oni is a likely candidate for that style of build too well i'll, I'll give you a spicy prediction here cole i think we're going to see almost the same build coming out from Zeno in the next game i i think we're going to see brutal bam absolutely um, I'm not sure what the fourth perk would be, but as we already know, we're going to see corrupt. But I think Zeno is the type of player that, yeah, he's just going to take, he's just going to take the killer power, and that's the only slowdown he needs, especially on a killer like Oni. Um, he's going to, I think he wants to take perks that are just going to exemplify his M1 chase and focus on that to get the blood flowing early. Okay, hear me out. We bring the one v one strats. Game afoot. Eh, eh. Now I'm, that would be a first, um, <laughs> but uh, I think these not. players these players would rather not use perks that are uh, from a killer that they don't even want to buy. So I'm sure we won't see any of the. Uh, I'm not. I'm not even going to say her name on the stream. <laughs> let's 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 change the topic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I think eruption is a foregone conclusion on Oni most of the time, just because. Unless you're going in that full hex build, Eruption is just so valuable on this killer. I'd be surprised if, if it's not being brought here. Um, and the thing with, with Oni is you the way his slugging works compared to Wraith and Billy, you don't really need any perks to facilitate that. You don't even really need perks to capitalize on it. You're, you're looking more to cover for the weaknesses of the killer, that being your early game, those first chases, um, and, and maybe holding some of the gems from far away but, but that's going to be harder with Pain Resonance being out of the equation. It's no longer allowed on Oni. Um, and looking forward into maybe the next season, I'm curious if Pain Resonance is going to stay banned for this tier of killer, um, given 
the sort of the meta shakeup that we've seen resulting from it, if we like that more or less than what we had previously. But enough of that, we are loading into the what should be the final trial of this matchup to determine whether Calamity or Elysium will be moving on to the winners final or they will be knocked down into the losers bracket to fight for their tournament life tomorrow. And here we go. Final match of the day on the Cole Tower. We have Zeno on the Oni. And I guess we were both right, Cole, looking at the build. He's got the brutal strength. That's what I predicted. But then he's also got what you predicted, which is crowd control Pentamento. Very interesting stuff coming out from Zeno. He's taking time to break out the doors in the main building. And first chase is going to start onto Marco. Immediately pre-drops that pallet around the main building. And that's, I mean, that's a really smart choice from Oh, he gets sandbagged. Oh no. The First hit people. comes in so fast. The window was just denied to him by his own teammate. That is so sad, Cole. The crowd control value straight away. He had the whole squad here. We saw another survivor wrapping around the front of main. Maybe they were trying to set up a head on, but Zeno already getting perk value. And like Yoka, he's got a he's got brutal strength and a perk for vaults, but his requires a little bit less effort from him. And if you decide to take that away from him, he's gonna have the Penamento threat. Marco now being chased is this is also gonna force Marco to drop more of these pallets more quickly. And the Brutal Strength will take care of that. The filler pallet here being dropped as well on a different survivor. Onto Rocket, it looks like. Pedro Hurt's camping the Shack pallet, possibly trying to drop it for his teammate, but so far, oh, we've got Zeno with power already. The crowd control has been discovered, but now Zeno knows that they know where it is, which is pretty bad for the survivors. And he can pop his power at any second now, waiting for the perfect opportunity. I mean, there's no eruption to be placed down on these gens, but he is getting the kick onto it with the brutal strength. Marco is healed up, but the damage is already done. He has his power at five gens. Corrupt is almost over. And I mean, if anybody tells you that crowd control is a bad perk, save that clip and show it to him right there because Zeno just got the most value out of it we've probably ever seen so far in this tournament. Now Rocket going to be taking another M1. He got caught out in a bad area. And I mean, what is Zeno waiting for here with the power? Is he waiting to just kind of... Is he just removing pallets here? Does he want to catch a survivor in a dead zone? Maybe get rid of the shack before he pops his power? Because that's where he's going now. I'm not sure. I mean, he... It, it, it's possible that with Rocket being M1 there, it's like, well, I'll have a little bit more blood on the map after I get this first chase. But immediate down with that Blood Fury. And we have also Marco hovering around for a fast pull, but Zeno still has a lot of charges left on his power. And if he can find where Rocket got reset, which is not far from here, he has power back immediately. The immediate pull as well. Now Zeno can possibly go for it down onto Marco here. Or he might just tunnel Pedro Hertz, certainly in the cards, and that crowd control occurring. Pedro is going to be forced to drop this pallet straight away, but now he's zoned away from Shaq. He's zoned away from pretty much anything he can use. The first turn of the match is being completed. He does have a God Filler here, but is it really a God Filler against an Oni in power? We might be finding out as Zeno possibly just bloodlusting in here, but the fast break. Yeah, and this is Zeno's plan here, is that he's just going to shred through these pallets and then be able to block every window so effortlessly with the crowd control. He's going to pop his power, try to find... He's still on Pedro here at the... Um, this is the Macmillan variant tile. Drops the pallet, it's gone now. He's going to go for a flip around the outer wall, but it looks like good pathing from Pedro. He's able to dodge out on the power so far. He's going for... Nope, he's going to let up on the dash there. Pedro trying to go for the window, but a good mind game there from Zeno. He is going to blind himself, and that's not going to stop Zeno from getting the down in the Blood Fury. Second hook now onto Pedro, and it looks like he might be going for the tunnel out type of strategy to meet this win condition. Yes, but the thing is, Pedro did a good job of looping Zeno for a lot of his power. This might be enough to deny Zeno an immediate recharge in his power. He does hear a lot of progress on that gen. He has spotted out Marco running down the map as well. A third gen is being completed. Calamity survivors should not be counted out here. They are getting very close to popping that last gen, but Zeno will be getting all of his power off of this as well. And now with that power, he can secure Pedro Hertz's death. And look at this. He still has that signature close power. Three gen top side. 
and Rocket dying out in the open here is a disaster for Calamity as now Zeno gonna go straight back to Hook and have his eyes on Marco here. He no longer needs to worry about tunneling Pedro Hurts. He can play the brushes. A fourth generator being completed as well. Pedro Hurts also getting the stun onto him. But Zeno's going straight back to the Rockets, of course. Yeah, and Zeno's just gonna leave that chase with the death hook. Pedro goes for the flick, but over flicks it there and hits the box. He's unable to find where Rocket went off to on the ground. No, he is going to pick Rocket up. So Pedro now, he's death hook and injured. Rocket is getting put up on the hook. This is going to be Zeno's third stage. And one generator to go. Cole, this game is a little bit closer than we thought. If Rocket were to die on this hook, I believe that would be a tie? Was it three or two fresh? I don't remember. Uh, it was two fresh. So Rocket dying or... Yeah, Rocket dying here would be a tie. If Pedro dies and they're able to get Rocket off instead, that could be a win for Calamity, but they have to be very careful not to let Laser or Marco be the one to go down next, as Zeno will find Pedro yet again, get to tag onto him, and with that, his power. Rocket is unhooked, so Zeno should be switching targets away from Pedro, but it looks like he is going to commit to tunnel out. There are no resources here for Pedro Hurst, so he will be dying immediately. Incredible flick from Zeno. Just an amazing wide angle flick there from Zeno. He's gonna secure the death now onto Pedro, and looks like the last generator is really close to being done here. So it's gonna be four stages with one survivor dead, two fresh for Zeno going into this end game. The survivors of Calamity have to play perfectly here as adrenaline is going to come out onto Rocket. Cole, this could not be closer going into the end game. Marco gets caught out, he runs directly into Zeno. This M1 tag going into him is gonna be a problem. You cannot let Marco get hooked here. You cannot let Laser get hooked here. You can maybe let Rocket get hooked once, but this is gonna be the win for Zeno. And Zeno secures the down onto Marco. He did not drop that Shack pallet because he knew he would just get zoned. He had to make the low percentage play. Some sort of crazy dodge there on the outside of the Shack but it just wasn't going to work out for him. Zeno turns around the shack, perfectly there, gets the down, and this hook secures it. Elysium beats Calamity 3-2, to two, will advance in the winner's bracket, and Calamity, so close yet again, but they are just always the bridesmaids, never the bride in these games. They're always competing, so close to beating these best teams in the world. Almost there today, Cole. I think, for Calamity's point of view, the fact that in the previous event, in Winter Circuit, Elysium was, frankly, stomping them. But the fact that we went to a 3-2 today instead, including one win on a set that Calamity, or that Elysium chose, rather, Calamity is competing much, much more closely. They have a much more realistic possibility of, if they're able to make that lower bracket run, of beating Elysium in a rematch. And they're also going to be a hell of a lot scarier to whoever from... Eternal versus Ariando faces them in the lower bracket. I would not count Calamity out here. And especially a huge, a huge um, confidence boost. Calamity is the only team in playoffs who has not beaten any of these teams so far. Calamity lost to Eternal and Elysium and Ariando in the regular season. Uh, Eternal lost to everyone but Calamity. And Ariando actually beating everyone from the playoffs when they met. Um, and instead dropping some really bizarre matches to like Sinners and Cynic and Zero Practice, that would be the wild card here. But um, yeah, Calamity taking us this close, um, even in this final set where they did lose out, it was on a nice edge until the very end. Elysium securing this win barely, you know, well played to both teams here with Elysium moving on and Calamity looking very, very scary to their next opponent. Yeah, going into the loser's bracket, Calamity is going to be so scary for whoever is on the losing end of the next match. I mean, they played so well today, Cole. This was, I mean, as we could not have asked for a better series here with the tiebreaker. Great job to Elysium, but also great job to Calamity. I think they really impressed everybody today with their play. And I can't wait to see if this close loss lights a fire in the loser's bracket.